Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the moderator and speakers for the first session of Gandhara Symposium 2023, titled Pathways to Peace, Exploring Pakistan's Rich Buddhist Legacy. The moderator for this session is Dr. Abdul Samad. Dr. Samad is a young presidential civil award-winning professional archaeologist from Pakistan with a qualification of PhD from the Institute of South Asian Languages and Cultures, Free University, Berlin, Germany, and Fulbright postdoc from the University of Wisconsin, USA. He has more than 15 years of experience in promoting the rich archaeological heritage of Pakistan. Currently, he is serving as the director, Directorate of Archaeology and Museums, Government of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Pakistan. The speakers for the session include Most Venerable Yu Sheng, Most Venerable Anil Sakya, Most Venerable Meetun, Venerable Bhikshu Kondanya, Venerable Dr. Kalanchi Ratanasri Thero, and Master Pu Jeng. I now invite the moderator, Dr. Samad, to take over the proceedings of the session. Thank you, Mesba. May I have your attention, please? Ladies and gentlemen, one of the main aims and objective of this symposium was to launch Pakistan as a hub of religious tourism. Uh, because we believe Pakistan is not just sacred for Muslim, but also for six to seven other religions. Uh, especially for Buddhism. And when we talk about Buddhism, then uh, the discussion of uh, Gandhara is very much important and Buddhism story is, I believe, is incomplete without Gandhara. So uh, today we'll be celebrating the Buddhist heritage of Pakistan. And we have some, I feel privileged to moderate this session because I'm having the most venerables from different countries. The first one is the most Venerable Zhou Xing from Malaysia. Uh, Most Venerable Zhou Xing is currently the Chief Abbess of FSG Malaysia and Singapore, Principal of Dongzhen Institute of Buddhist Studies and CEO of Fo Gyeong Publication. She will see more than 15 chapters of FGS in Malaysia. Our second Honorable uh, Panelist is Most Venerable Anil Shakya. Uh, Most Venerable Anil Shakya is Honorary Director and World Buddhist University and Vice President for Foreign Affairs and Global Engagement, Mamkut Buddhist University, Thailand. He has an MPhil from Cambridge University, followed by a PhD in Social Anthropology from Brunei University in the UK. He is widely recognized as a scholar, monk, and has greatly contributed to the Buddhist world, particularly to Nepal and Thailand. Our next honorable guest is most venerable Mijung. Uh, who is from the senior monk of Joge Order of Korean Buddhism. Uh, he has completed his doctoral study from Korean University uh, Graduate School and uh, Venerable, most venerable, has also served as a director of Central Buddhist Museum of Joge Order of Korean Buddhism from 2016 to 2018. He had the honor to be part of committee of the Joge Order and a member of Conservation Buddhist Sanity currently. MV is chief priest of Mayajogsa of Jogi Order, Republic of South Korea. Uh, our next honorable panelist is Venerable Bhikshu Kandanya. Yeah. Kandanya. Yeah. MV Kandanya is chief abbot of Buddha Bihara, located at Birikuti Mundip, Kathmandu, Nepal. He has previously appointed as a vice chair Nepal Buddhist Federation, and he has a master's degree in Nepalese history, culture, and archaeology from the uh, Tri Buhun University, Kathmandu, Nepal. And our last panelist is Master Fujing, the venerable, yes, the most venerable. Dr. Kalan Chia. Uh, the MV Theru is a senior lecturer in Pali language at, at Bhikshu University of Sri Lanka. He obtained his BA degree in Pali from University of uh, Kalyania. He is the director of unit of postgraduate external degrees and extension courses, Bhikshu University of Sri Lanka. Thank you very much for 
coming to Pakistan and uh, sharing your experience with us. We will be confined to one hour discussion. I believe you have a presentation. We will start from uh, the we'll start from MV Joshin. I believe this is not the first time you are here in Pakistan. Uh, this is, I believe, this is the third time you are here in Pakistan. She has a lot of contribution, uh, not in the field of Gandharan studies, but also supporting the flood effects in Swat and Sid. So thank you very much for your contribution, and uh, please uh, for your presentation. Please, please, please. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I feel very touched. This is my, actually the third time I'm arriving in this living country. People love me. Venerable, why are you always thinking about Pakistan? I say, yeah. I never, I traveling a lot of place and I never see such a country. I feel love from my heart. So congratulations to our Pakistan, because Pakistan bring me a great, and the Gandhara bring us a great surprise to the world. And actually in March last year, I also invited by uh, Dr. Ijao to attend a forum about the culture and uh, some about the heritage of the Gandhara. And then after that, I feel that the Pakistan uh, Pakistani people. I think I feel very touched because for your millenniums of guardianship and for preserving the cultural and heritage of Gandhara and bring great surprise to the world, including me. And look at look back, I say well, look at back over the years I have traveling, I have an opportunity to traveling in many countries around the world then I feel that this place always keep in my mind. And when I saw the Pakistans and heard along the way, keep reverberating. Let me see some photo that I take last year. Yeah, uh, this is that uh, I went here. Eh? I feel very, very, very touched. Second photo. And please third photo. I also been traveling to the India several times, but I think Pakistan's heritage, like Vivir, and really stayed in my mind. And next, Pakistan gave me such significant influence and unforgettable experience. To this day, these Gandhara artifacts that have been preserved and even unshelved and then unearthed the statues of Buddha and Stupa are still so vivid and etched in my mind. See the next picture. That my, I and my colleagues, uh, monks and nuns, all come and changing around the place. Okay, I want to thank everyone, all my Pakistan friends who were present for taking such great care of these precious Buddhist artifacts and for your willingness to receive us, Buddhists, and come back here, allow us to see the holy image and of these Buddhists in person. For Pakistanis, the Gandhara artifacts as your ancestors, historical and cultural heritage. For us, Gandhara is an important and very indispensable page for the history of the propagation of our faith and religion, especially Mahayana Buddhism. Next, this is some photo that uh, last year welcomed by the organizer. And years two zero last year, then as the same, our president, doc, Dr. Arif Avi, he delivered as a very touchful address about the Gandhara and also he was mentioning that the president was very gracious and said he had so experienced the meditation for inspirations. 
And also, I invited by one of yours to give a, a roundtable panelist about the interfaith harmony on this conference. And I spoke about the diversity of religion in Malaysia, this, our highest commissioner, Dr. Hill. And we share how we promote harmony in our country, in charity work, our cultural, and the government promote One Malaysia. The very, very important to aim to create a fair and very equal and harmonized society and bring people, all races, close and close through together. And this is uh, some photo that last year we are no hand to hand in hand unity in this heritage. And really thank you to the government's professors, scholars of Gandhara culture and art in Pakistan who present their research of Gandhara Buddhist to the public and brought us back to ancient Buddhist Gandhara 2000 years ago. And this rich research of history and image gave us a branch new audio and visual experience. And the Buddhist art of Gandhara developed from the second century before, before second, that means two centuries before that BC. And it peaked in the seventh century, leaving endless treasure to our future generations. And Dr. Samit also uh, have a very important book, Gandhara story that I think everyone is in your hands. And this is some photo I also traveling and visit Jaulian Taxila Valley and also Jahandabad Swat Valley. And this is what is my uh, precious. We were accompanied by Let Prince Anand and he and Mr. Imran, Mr. Dr. Ijao and others, they make our trip very exciting with their guide, tour and explanation. I want to tell to the world, Pakistan is a safety country. I think everyone must come and visit. And this is some photo that I visit Janabat and also other photos. Along the way, really we saw intact stately statues and many through the edge or the reverage of war or some happened, intentional sabotage of the heritage. But look at that, the same desolate heritage. I, I couldn't help, but I pay my homage. I hope this country will be peace forever. And also, I, I've swept, I choked, I've swept several times involuntarily. And please have another picture that we round and round, walk around meditation in this uh, statues and heritage. And please look at this. I thanks and grateful our Pakistan friends were very understand and quiet stood behind me. They saw me kneeling and in the dust. I, I feel very touched about her, really, until now also. Because it, they, they, they told me that the Buddhism in the religion of Diya, this ancient ancestor who left behind the Buddhist heritage. Although they are now Muslim, but they have respect and love in this in their heart. And some of the intention sabotage is entire due to the war or the times. Yeah, but they feel that everyone, especially now today, Pakistan government, university, department of tourism, want to build again or try to grab again, to care again, this cultural. I think this is a brilliant and wise decisions. The friendship between Buddhism and Islam I think start from thousand years ago and will continue to deepen in this land. I think Allah blessing this land, protect this land, Buddha also blessing for this land and all the place. And Pakistan will become more progressive and prosper, prosperous and peaceful now 
in the future, what the uh, president mentioned just now. By celebrating the Pakistan Buddhist heritage and Gandhara civilization, you see now by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and uh, Tourism and uh, our other Department of Government of Pakistan, I think the, the country showcase is respect and diverse for diversity, cultural dialogue and tolerance. It highlights the importance of sharing the share history of different civilization and promotes a sense of national pride, as well as fostering international cultural exchange and countries' recognition of its rich historical legacy. I went to Karachi, I saw the museum, I saw touch, the Lotus Sutra and the classic Quran is the same in the same uh, hall. Uh, let me very, very touch. Actually, all of this sutra or sastra is want to bring people more wisdom, more understanding each other and more peace. And Actually, in Gandhara of Pakistan, we have confirmed the birth of many eminent Buddhist monks and master, such as Vasubadu and Lokasema and Zhuyao and Zhuqian, etc., whose translate of the Mahayana classic sutra have been transmitted to China and the world for nearly 2,000 years ago. If the causes and conditions are really, we would like to help to find the original classic sutra or sastra and restore again in native languages like Udu. I hope that we want to let the local people know that the Swat Valley, Pesawa, and Taxila, the birthplace of Mahayana Buddhism around 2000 years ago have already brought the sutra to the world, especially to China and India more than more than 1,000 years ago. And I want to tell you also a very good news that um, not only in Pakistan have this uh, such forum, I bring back to Malaysia also. If uh, our Pakistan, Her Excellency uh, Abran, she and me host together last year. Uh, we have a Pakistan cultural festival in Malaysia. What we are doing, please have a look. And we have a very nice, you know, the, the, some pictures of Gandharas as uh, statues. And also we have, uh, you know, the July is a mango season. We brought a lot of mangoes from Pakistan to Malaysia. And also they attest the fruits, some vegetables, and also seed and utensil and music. This is very, very uh, well received and give people the better understanding of Pakistan. So let us make a people see the beautiful of Pakistan and highlight of Pakistan. Let me see there are some pictures that we have this uh, uh, Pakistan Cultural Festival, second feature. You can see that uh, we have a music and some uh, uh, the cultural fruits and anything. And the, the uh, how to say the, the some uh, fruits, especially mangoes, and some people like it very very much. Yeah. So please, I I'm pleased to inform that the Fogwang San Education Center in Malaysia have formed partnership with Kadiazm University in Islamabad. Our collaboration has led to establish of a humanistic Buddhism research center and a connection with the Sikh Road Center. We have mentioned communication throughout the process with Dr. Yao and Dr. Ghani and Dr. Fashiha and others. Additional, this June, we invite expert and scholar from Pakistan to Malaysia to promote the Gandhara civilizations and the important culture in our scholar conference. Uh, 
please see the picture. And this is what uh, we come to uh, the university and have a sign of an MOU. And see at the next photo that we invite the scholar to Malaysia, our University Malaya, to have exchange our experience. And I also hope that soon we can work together with the Pakistan Tourism Board, Minister of Education, and National Heritage and Cultural Device Division to promote various cultural arts, lectures, caving, and painting workshops and start exhibition, exhibition in worldwide. We hope get the attention and support of the world. When we bring people come here, you today I thank very much to the government and all the organizers bring us to come here. We also need to bring the culture of Gandhara to the world and let people know to every country. So I hope that you see the such beautiful a Buddha statue and sculpture and painting and all such nice cultural. Really, we walk in, we also need to bring out for world to know that. And a very special, delicious food, so so, uh, cultural, everything's there. I think the beautiful, uh, these things all need to let other people know. So standing on the stage today, I in front of audience from the bottom in my heart. I sincerely hope that all human beings around the world, just the president mentioned, we need peace. We, regardless of nationality or religions or race, we achieve, achieve oneness and coexistence and peace and harmony, coexistence and co-prosperity, and that we will make progress together hand in hand. This is my conclusion. Gandhara civilization forever the pride of Pakistanis. And also what to say Gandhara, every stone tell a story. All of you also, we join together hand in hand, try to create the history again. All the world peace and the beautiful Gandhara civilization and heritage bright and bring and let all the world know that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Amy, for your touching remarks at the end. Uh, before going to the next speech by the most venerable Anisha Kia, I would like to emphasize uh, from the panelist, I have a request that why there is uh, Gandhara is not occupying a proper significant place in a modern Buddhism. I mean, there is no connection. Only scholars, they know about Gandhara, but the modern Buddhism, there is no connection. I mean, there are misconceptions about uh, Gandhara in Pakistan, especially if you're talking about the Padma Sambhava sect. The common people, they have no idea about the Padma Sambhava sect, and they think this is somewhere in India is promoting Padma Sambhava birthplace, as Odisha is the birthplace of Padma Sambhava. But actually, uh, in the sutras, in text, in Buddhist texts, everybody uh, knows properly. There is evidence, tangible evidence, is in Swat Twali that Padma Sambhava was in Swat, and Swat is the origin place of Sambhava. So I would like to uh, the panelists to discuss also these two issues, like why Gandhara is not occupying this prominent uh, role in the modern Buddhism, and also this Padma Sambhava thing, but like the Indian part of the uh, propagation and also the reality. I know Gandhara's uh, culture and Buddhism from my age of 29. When I was a student, I read the books. I know the history, but actually nobody invited us to come here. So when after 35 years, I reached this land, I saw surprise, not only tear, Cheering. I feel that we meet again Buddha or the, the, the city civilization of the Gandhara already wait for me 1,000. So I wrote a message that, sorry, I led to come for 1,000 years. But now we are here. All of us can promote because through our new media, I think through everyone's, through mouth to mouth, person to person, country to country. 
I think this is a time, the right time we promote it. And it's important, you see, the, the very, how to say, spacious sculpture and painting. We need to let people know. I think now is the day our Pakistan opened the gate for everyone to come in. And everyone, the, 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 this uh, uh, culture of heritage of Uganda need to go out to show exhibition in China, Malaysia, South Asia, Europe, or American. We need to walk out and show them. I think, I think the embassy, I think the government or the tourism department try to help to see it have this exhibition around the world. I hope welcome this exhibition can come to Malaysia first. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. May I request uh, Most Venerable Anil Shakya to share his views? Please, sir. Namo Buddhaya. Salam Alaikum. I am very honored to be here with you. Your Excellencies Muhammad has been very close friends, has been known for quite a long and I'm glad to see that all the excellencies here, all the ministers here, and especially Buddhist brothers and sisters, and of course, all distinguished guests as brothers and sisters and ladies and gentlemen. I guess there's, we have a little bit of miscommunication between the organizing committee here and the, the, the consular or the embassy in Thailand, I guess, because Based on our communications, I was uh, asked to give some remark on the main theme, which is a cultural di uh, diplomacy, reviving Gandhara and Buddhist heritage in Pakistan. But uh, when I see this booklet, I am under the uh, sessions called Pathways to Peace. But anyway, I guess that I am not going to blow up your peace anyway, whatever the topic all about. Uh, within this very short kind of a 15 minutes, which the the honorable moderator has given me, I think there's a few things I want to clear it out with this a very important topic, and especially the way we are organizing this symposium or international conference. First of all, I would say that uh, the government of Pakistan and uh, people of Pakistan, you know, I have to salute you because this is a great kind of a coming out as an Islamic country organizing a Buddhist, pure Buddhist conference. And this is something which you shows that you are very brave. I really salute you. Not only that, looking at the logo, you know, how wide, how open you are. Logo itself, you know, it's there's a G, Gandhara, and you know, you have a not single living monk here in Pakistan, but at least the shadow of the monk is there. So it means that you are welcoming Buddhist monks from your heart to overlook what you got as a Pakistani heritage or Gandhara civilization. In fact, we are over-focused on the Gandhara, I think. When we look at the Gandhara, what we see? What see the images, a beautiful structures as Venerable said it. But for me, but what I see, I want all of us to see beyond that image. Gandhara is something new compared to what you got here as a civilization in Pakistan. If you go back to the time of the Buddha, even prior to the Buddha, we all know that we have a Takasila. We have so many other places. All those places are what importance of those places are in this world. Don't forget that you got the greatest inspiration and seed of knowledge, sort of a, one of the ancient seed of knowledge you got it here in Pakistan. Takkasila was, before the time of the Buddha, was a seed of knowledge. Comparing to these days, it is a Cambridge, Oxford, or Howard. 
where you, you even have a very, very developed medical education here. If you know, the Buddha's physician, Jivaka Komara Bhatcha, he was educated in Takasila, who by the text was even able to make operation of the human brain at the time. It means that this is the place once you are very, very advanced to this modern world. So I want to remind that with this symposium that you should be very proud of not Gandhara alone, but who you are as the seed of the world knowledge, <laughs> the Takkasila. Having said that, the topic, the main theme we have given here is a the culture of diplomacy. Reviving Gandhara civilization and Buddhist heritage in Pakistan. Again, as an academic, you know, don't mind me saying this. I would say that this is trying to have a sort of a, some kind of expectation and overreaching some kind of the reality of what we got it here. As I just said it that this is a very odd, this is a very, very symbolic in terms of this world that a Muslim is hosting the Buddhist conference. So in one way you are opening, but in a cynical way, if you are looking at a very cynical way, it just reminds me of the, the book called Orientalism by Edward Said. So it is like a, you are trying to come out so much, you are forcing yourself saying that a, we got a Buddhist thing, we are the Buddhist, or we have this something is Buddhist. I think that is too much, you know, just like any Oriental and any Westerners, when they come to the, our uh, Asian country and they become Asian more than the Asian themselves. So I see this as a, we are trying to be a Buddhist, whatever the Buddhist it weighs, but we are trying to be a Buddhist more than the Buddhist themselves. What I see the all the images, the beautiful structures, the beautiful Buddhas, of course, it touches my heart. I am from the Sakya family from Nepal, which means that I have a one or way, we believe that we have some descendant lineage with the Buddha himself. So in order to see my ancestor in a such a way, it feel, makes me feel very, very, you know, just going back, coming back to my home. In Nepal, in Thailand or in India, I didn't see that kind of Buddha. You see that all the Buddha there is at a later development. But this is the, we can say that original Buddha we can have, we see, have seen in this world. So if I want to see my, what is my, my ancestor's face look like, I have to come in here to see what his Buddha looks like really. I don't know whether he was really like that or as an ancestor look like me, I don't know. <laughs> but the whole idea of this, Cultural diplomacy, what you are given, I think very important is very timely because this is a time after we had just recovering from the COVID-19. And then we have seen that with the COVID-19, the damage it made in this world is tremendous. The COVID-19, it was not damaging only the, our kind of a hygiene or kind of a health issue, but it destroyed us, the whole the relationship the connectivity between human to human. Suddenly, as the Honorable President has just said in his remark, that this development of technology, this development of what was going on, it is the, what we call it, development or destruction of humanity. So we have to think hard. This is a time. This is a time that we are just recovering from the COVID. And then we have resumed a lot of technology, a lot of idea, which, in, uh, which was given by the COVID-19. Talking about a development, do you aware that the United Nations SDG or Sustainable Development Goal is in crisis at the moment? It is not something that we are always looking that we have to be sustainable development. Even the word sustainable development, we have to rethink it very hard. Because as far as my communication with the UN, they are saying that uh, now most of the, all the project under the United Nations, they are talking about rescuing a sustainable development goal, rescuing SDG. 
So that's why we have to think what kind of development, what kind of economy we are talking about. So that's why if I am allowed to speak, you know, as a friend, as a kind of a, you know, world citizens, I would say that in order to think of a Gandhara civilization and the Buddhist heritage, it's all right. But I think it is a little bit too much. It is kind of a little bit of, I say that hypocrite. But why don't we see beyond that? In order to see beyond that, what I need and what I see is that uh, you need to do a little bit of work. First, let's say, me, let me tell about the cultural diplomacy. Do you know that what is cultural diplomacy all about? The cultural diplomacy is something, what we call a soft power these days. And the word soft power, we are very familiar with the word soft power. But the soft power at the moment, which was just coined around 1990s. And the whole idea of a, a cultural diplomacy, again, it was something around 19th centuries, around 1870 and so and so. But do you ever realize that your heritage, your civilizations, what you got it in Pakistan, unfortunately, it is in the ruins, but that is an outcome of very cultural diplomacy King Ahsoka started. This is a seed of cultural diplomacy. If you go back to the history of Buddhism, Ahsoka was someone who wanted to use hard power in order to expand his reign, his land. But once he found a Buddhist novice, he changed his idea and suddenly he stopped killing, not using the, all the hard power. He changed to use his soft power with the teaching of nonviolence, with the teaching of peace, with the teaching of. Remind you that although we say that the Ahsoka is a you know, Buddhist devout, but there is a no single rock edits which says that uh, Ahsoka is a Buddhist. He equally worship and accept all religion. He was the symbol of interfaith or uh, to, you know, religious tolerance we ever have in, in our world. The word cultural diplomacy is that the all you got is that when he sent his whatever culture back from the where he's, he was in Patna to the you know, West, like in Pakistan, that is the what we are getting it because he are not he was not using his sword to get over and win over your mind, but he used the cultural diplomacy. He used the word cultural diplomacy and message of peace, tolerance, harmony, not the Buddhism. Buddhism at the moment is taking some time in a certain way. It's become so institutionalized. It's so organizational. It is kind of a Buddhism as a, you know, one entity. But a true idea of Buddhism is not that entity. True idea of Buddhism is Buddha is awakened. And this is the place, Gandhara, you can see that once it was awake, the Takasila, once it was awakened, but now it slept. Now, this all you got is that a dead archaeology. So I want to appeal you to that. How can you bring that dead archaeology, the live archaeology? How can you bring that every stone, this, tell the story? How can you tell your story to the world? Not as a Buddhist, but as a universal message of peace, intolerance, and harmony. This is we are really lacking of at the moment. Therefore, cultural diplomacy was the first word actually King Ahsoka used it. He used the word Dhamma Mahamatra or Dhamma Mahamata in Bali. What does it mean? It means that he appointed in his 14th reign of his king kingship. After he became a king for 14 years, he get, came out with this new idea ever in the world, having the cultural diplomat, first time in the world. If you go back to look at the Ahsoka edict number five, number six, and so many others, it is very clearly says that uh, he has appointed cultural diplomats or uh, Dhamma Mahamatra, the, his officials, to overlook at the, all the situation of culture, religion, belief, and the welfare of the people, not Buddhism. Buddhism is one of that. And that is how he 
really spread the idea. He's giving or uh, he's whatever he was contributing as a Buddhism at the moment. It is not in order to create the Buddhist population, but he was creating, he was doing all of that in order to give happiness and peace to the world. And that is a cultural diplomacy of a uh, example we can see. Later on, which you come back to the modern way, modern world, it is the only in the, after the Second World War, the Cold War, we started to really see the importance of cultural diplomacy again, with the America having EU aid, with the Great, Great Britain have a British Council, and then with all these powerful country have their own instead of a mighty military and economic and pay and money. So we are coming the soft power to, in order to have influence, in order to share, in order to having kind of a P2P or people to people understanding mutual bonding between each other. And that is what we call a sustainable peace. It is not kind of this art and artifacts. So what we have to see, what I see is that, of course, we are talking about economy, but I don't want you to see the money is everything. Economy, in other words, if you know the, if you really look back at the etymology, of course, it's from the Okinamas. It's a management of household, it's a management of society, it's a management of our family. It's not about money. Money is a part of it only. Therefore, in order to develop, in order to develop this idea, reviving Gandhara and Buddhist civilizations, uh, Buddhist heritage, I want to say is that, first of all, don't focus on the foreign tourism. Because in order to develop the foreign tourism, we got a problem here. We, are, we have to fight with this Western media. Are we able to fight with the Western media at the moment? Because whatever happening in the Pakistan, the, on, on security, whatever it is, it is actually everywhere in every country. But when they cast this news in the world news, this is the worst. So everyone is very scared to come in. So this is the why, how we have to, you know, fight with this Western media, this is one thing. The second thing is that uh, how can we develop this ruins, not as a Buddhist heritage, but as a Pakistani heritage, not as a Buddhist heritage, as a Pakistani heritage. And, and under, under the Pakistani heritage, of course, Buddhism will be under Pakistani heritage. So the message of peace, message of harmony, message of intolerance, message of kind of interfaith, which is the Asokan, very clear. King Asoka is very clear with that. How should we really revive those messages from those ruins? Only then we can make it that this is a, the, the Minister Ramesh dream. It is not only his dream, I want to say that. It is not your dream, but it is everyone in this world dreams that how can we bring those you know, invaluable message into this world. At the, at the moment, we are in chaos with the technology. We are in the chaos with the power. We are in the chaos with kind of a name of religion. But the message, the ultimate message is here. So how can we bring it? So therefore, we, I will say that if we really understand that, we have to bring the awareness of importance of those places, what you got it, from domestic side, from a nationalistic side first. Make it, how can you make it? This is a domestic place of seat of knowledge where you can inspire the idea of a peace, where they can inspire idea of a harmony, where you can inspire the idea of awakening, not the Buddha as a religious figure, the Buddha as someone who are intellectual enough to deal with the whatever happening in this world. In order to do that, of course, once you develop the whole local network and able to go and inspire those places, then every one single uh, citizens of Pakistan will love those places. It is not as a Buddhist places, but it is your places where you can bring a lot of good things out of those stones. Buddha means awakening. So you can be awakened with what is going on and not in the name of the religion, but in the name of what you call is universal masses. That is something we have to work it on. We don't care is Islam or Buddhist or Hindu or whatever. Okay, because we have a universal knowledge. Second, which I want to request to the minister here, it's from as a brother, as a friendly suggestions. I would say that when we arrive in Pakistan, you know, for myself, 
I find that there's no threat. There's a nothing. There's a very, all the friends are very, you know, all the brothers and sisters are very friendly and so and so. But the, the, the pictures, the whole scenario you portray to us is a threatening. So for example, I once say that when I was here about 13 years ago, I was heavily given honor of what you call security with the, all the machines around me. And I say that I'm a man of peace and I don't want to develop the idea of a peace you know, with this gun. The peace shouldn't be the gun there at all. So there's a one way ministers, your excellencies, you have to find a way. Is there any way that you can give the, uh, the security to the, all the people who come here with it discreetly? You don't have to show off so much because it is, everything is military, everything we say, we are going back to the hard power. Now we are talking of the soft power. Soft power is mutual understanding. We can use education, we can do and that. So instead of having this kind of conferences, I again, I would like to suggest that, why don't we have a mutual kind of uh, MOU or understanding between different universities? I noticed that in many universities, you have a Gandhara department, Gandhara chair and so and so. So instead of having that, uh, having some time to time, you have a scholars inviting to speak with the student. Because anyway, once you are speaking in the scenario, in the, in the what we call this, the university sort of a wall, it is academic. It is a more kind of acceptable than if you are really working hard to have kind of a Buddhist monk here, you are trying to have that this is a Buddhist center. I think that this is that it, it doesn't work. The time has changed. This is a 21st century. Don't be a religious fanatic. We have to become together. Religious is a personal thing. Actually, the word religion, dharma, in Urdu, or in Sanskrit, or in Hindi, or the word, you know, sasana in Pali or whatever, dharma just means uphold. You see, from dra is a dharati, same word, it means that just means uphold. How can we uphold a humanity? The sasana means that it is a, something which can cleanse your mind from old mental defilements. That is what we call a sasana or dharma in religion, in Pali or in Sanskrit. It doesn't mean that you have to hold on to some person, hold on to some statue and so. Actually, I would say that the Pakistani are the people who taught me to worship the Buddha image, the icon. Because in the text, we never, Buddha never says that I worship him. But with your ancestors' background, listening to the Buddha's life history, listening to the Buddha's idea, so you are so inspired to carve to out of this all this stone and beautiful Buddha images. And suddenly, you know, we forget our master's teacher and we suddenly kind of uh, got back to the whole idea of uh, we love Buddha. In fact, Buddha, again, is that awakening. So I would say that it's time for all of us to awaken. This is a state of knowledge where the civilization is earlier than Silk Road. I have a one work, I have, I have one research, which I proved that uh, all these Asians has connected through the Uttarapada. That is a Asian highway, the Northern highway, which was early to the time of the Buddha early to the Silk Road, which connect all of us in Asia by the language, by the food, by the Hollywood, Bollywood, whatever you want to call it. All those things is a soft power, you see? So how can we awaken? How can we become a Buddha of awakening of this soft power and exercise that soft power to all over the world? And then I will say that you are a true Pakistani. Thank you. Thank you, MV. Uh, I would say we become a Buddha and we have awakened already and uh, we have started the cultural diplomacy, the soft image. That's why we are sitting here together. And uh, I agree with most of your point, but I may not agree with some of your point. Okay. Yeah. So, for example, the we are talking about Gandhara that we are promoting Buddhism and it's not Gandhara is not Buddhism. It's not it's Gandhara. Buddhism is healthy. Yeah. Gandhara is just part of uh, Buddhism is just part of uh, Gandhara. We, as I explained in the beginning, that we have six to seven ancient religions and cultures. This is a melting pot of cultures, civilizations. So we are celebrating Gandhara as a as a center of multicultural activities, not just Buddhism. 
and we are not uh, promoting Buddhism. Uh, we are not spreading Buddhism here. And this is, uh, uh, and apart from that, we are very much proud custodian of our cultural heritage, Gandharan heritage. It's not about Buddhism. It's not about if you if you go to our museums and archaeological sites, you discuss about the concept of religious harmony. We should start on religious harmony. But I want you just to share my personal research that the concept of religious harmony emerged from this part of the world, from Pakistan, 2000 years ago. It was never before in Europe or America or anywhere uh, the country from you are coming. Mm -hmm. If you go to Peshawar Museum, in one panel, you see five to six different gods in one panel, which means they were acceptable for each other. They were respecting each other's ideas. So uh, this religious harmony concept was emerged from this part of the world and spread to the rest of the world. So, so uh, thank you very much. And these were some of my points. Uh, we go to the next speaker, the most venerable uh, Mejong. And uh, I would request that we should also discuss, touch the point of Gandhara art, like we should celebrate the tangible and intangible heritage of Gandhara as well, not just focusing on the Buddhist or, or sculptural heritage. We should also discuss about the intangible heritage as well. And also, there is a common concept in the world, in, uh, in Buddhist world especially, the Gandhara art is influenced from the West. While we think the Professor Abdul uh, Farooq Swati is sitting here, he did his PhD on this topic that we think this is other way around. It's not from uh, from the West, but it's it, it went from this part of the world. So we should also consider this point. Our next speaker is uh, from South Korea, which we believe we have strong connections. The Malananda, the Buddhist monk who traveled from Gandhara in 4th century BC AD, and he um, introduce Buddhism in South Korea. So that's why this is very much important. Uh, that what are his views, the most venerable? Please, please, Miss most venerable. Chonun, Han Gugeso, Chonim Jejaro, Saragawinon, Shuengja, B. Tung, Yawamida. Isarie, Teambulio, Jogejong Sosoe, Pulio, Chungang Bangulwan, Hanjangro, Chode, Teo. 여러분들과 컨퍼런스에 함께하기 위해 참석하였습니다. 한국과 파키스탄은 1983년 정식으로 외교 관계를 수립한 후 지속적으로 교류를 확대해 올해로 수교 40주년을 맞이하였습니다. My name is Midang I am and I am a disciple of Buddha living in Korea. I have been invited to this conference as the director of Central Buddhism Museum under the guidance of the Choke Order of Korean Buddhism. This year marks the 40th anniversary of diplomatic relations between Pakistan and Korea, which was established 1983 and is continuously expanding ever since. Pakistan's Gandhara Bulgyo Munan is now in 1939, and the first time in 1984, Pakistani Marananta Sinimi, Kandara Bulsangwa Amke, Kandara Bulgurul, Hanguge, Chonangosur Shijaguru, Yangukane, Munagure, Yoksarul, Hagin Alsu Ismida. Nandara art was first introduced to Korea from Pakistan in 384, almost 1639 years ago. The history of cultural exchanges between the two countries can be traced back to when Marananta from Pakistan who brought Buddhism to Pekje along with Buddha statue of Gandhara and when Yocho. 세계적인 불교 유적지를 간직하고 있는 파키스탄은 서가모니 부처님의 열반 이후 불상이 탄생한 지역으로 불교 문화의 고향입니다. 특히 부처님 고행상으로 유명한 라오로 박물관에 불교 미술과 탁실라 박물관 등 간다라 지역의 여러 박물관에서 엄청난 불교 문화를 보여주고 있습니다. Home to some of the world's greatest Buddhist historic sites, Pakistan is where the sculpted images of Sukhamoni Buddha as a new domain in art was created after he passed away. It is the birthplace of a new artistic style of Buddhist culture, 
some of the most breathtaking Buddhist artworks are on display in the museum of this region. The most notable of which are the Lahore Museum, famous for housing fasting Buddha, and the Textile Museum, a treasure trove of Gandhara art. The Gandhara civilization is held in high esteem for its cultural and historical values, as it represents a fusion of distinct cultures, religions, ethnicities, and languages of East and West. Above all, the origin of Korean Buddhist culture can be found in Gandhara. And with this in mind, Korean Buddhist art historians have actively pursued academic exchanges with Pakistan. Pakistan's Gandhara culture is the same as the other culture of Gandhara. The culture is the same as the culture of Gandhara. The culture is the same as the culture of Gandhara. 간다라 불교 문화에서 찾을 수 있습니다. 한국의 불교 미술 학계에서는 적극적으로 파키스탄과 교류를 시도한 적이 있습니다. 대한불교 조계종이 설립한 동국대학교에서 1985년 개교 80주년을 기념하여 간다라 학술 조사단이 구성되어 페르시아와 탁실라, 길기트 등을 중심으로 고대 문명을 답사하였습니다. 이를 통해 불교인에게는 해초 스님과 같은 구법의 마음을 되새겨 수행과 연구의 귀감이 되었고 일반 국민들에게는 새로운 간다라의 불교 문화를 알리는 계기가 되었습니다. To commemorate the 80th anniversary of Dongguk University, which was founded by the Jokhe Order of Korean Buddhism in 1906. The Gandhara Academic Search Group was formed in 1985 to explore ancient civilizations such as Monjodaro, Harappa, whose sites are located in Pishar, Texla, and Gilgit. The team followed in when Yo took footsteps in studying and participating Buddha Dharma while providing an opportunity for the general public to learn more about the Gandhara Buddhist culture. 한국 발굴팀이 진행했던 발굴 조사는 높게 평가받았으며 한국의 미술사학계에서 간다라 사원의 구조, 탑실의 형식, 불상 양식 등의 연구에 크게 도움이 되었습니다. 한국 발굴팀이 이룬 성과에도 불구하고 잦은 분쟁과 자연재, 코로나19 등 다양한 요인들로 인해 발굴 조사는 중단되었고 국가 간의 교류 역시 원활하지 않은 채 오늘에 이르렀습니다. At that time, the archaeological excavations conducted by the Korean team were highly regarded. They contributed greatly to the study of Gandhara temple structures, Pakkoda, chamber architecture, and Buddhist statues in the field of Korean art history, laying an important cornerstone in the study of Gandhara Buddhism. However, despite their excellent achievement, such projects were interrupted frequently by the political disturbances and natural disasters and eventually suspended due to COVID-19. Since then, bilateral exchanges between the two countries have become a bit slow. 오랜 역사를 버텨오던 파키스탄의 불교 문화 유산은 보존상 여러 가지 어려움을 겪고 있습니다. 남아 있는 문화유산마저 사라질까 봐 우려되는 바입니다. 파키스탄은 무엇보다 간다라 불교 문화유산에 대한 기록화 작업과 복원 및 보존 사업에 힘써야 한다고 말씀드리고 싶습니다. 그리고 이러한 일은 한국과 파키스탄이 공동으로 시행한다면 불교 문화에 대한 연구는 물론 문화유적의 복원에도 중요한 계기가 될 것입니다. Pakistan Buddhist Cultural Heritage which survived millenniums, is now facing conservational changes. There are fears that what remains is now being threatened with wholesome destruction. I would like to take this opportunity to urge Pakistani authorities and stakeholders to focus themselves to document, restore, and preserve Gandhara Buddhist heritage. Korea and Pakistan work together by jointly launching academic projects which will serve to advance the research on Buddhist cultures as well as the restoration of historic relics. 한국 불교 조각의 최고 걸작이라고 평가받는 경주 불국사 석굴암을 비롯하여 경주 남산의 크고 작은 바위에 새겨진 부처님들은 
모두 간다라 불교에서 출발하여 천여 년의 넘는 시간 동안 한반도의 수준 높은 불교 문화로 꽃피우고 있습니다. 한국에서 간다라 불교 문화를 접한 기회는 아득하기만 합니다. 이런 의미에서 간다라 문명과 불교 유산을 주제로 개최되는 이번 국제 학술 컨퍼런스는 한국의 학자들 뿐만 아니라 일반인들에게도 간다라 불교 문화의 우수성에 대해 다시 한번 각인시키는 좋은 기회가 될 것입니다. Kandara tradition is recognized as a symbol of peace and a coexistence as it has successfully fused the cultural elements of East and West. The myriad Buddha images in diverse size carved on rocks in Nam mountain as well as the sculptures encased in the Sokuram grotto at Bulguksa temple in Gyeonggi-ju, which is considered one of the greatest masterpieces of Korean Buddhism, trace their origin to Gandhara art. whose influences helped create the refined Buddhist culture that blossomed on the Korean peninsula for over a thousand years. However, despite the wealth of cultural heritage of Gandhara style in Korea, there has been little exchange with the region. The birthplace of Buddhist artistic expression limited the public exposure to it. In this sense, this International Academy Conference on Gandhara Civilization and its Buddhist heritage most opportune occasion to remind not only Koreans scholars but also the general public of the brilliance of gandhara buddhist art 이 자리에서 간다라 불교 문화의 경이로운 가치를 이야기하다 보니 최근 한국에서 이슈가 되고 있는 마해 부처님이 생각납니다. 한국 불교 최대 종단인 대한 불교 조계종의 요즘 최고의 화두는 8세기 경에 조성되어 1430년에 발생한 지진으로 인해 쓰러져 600여 년 동안 넘어진 상태로 계시는 경주 남산 열암곡 마해 부처님을 바로 세우는 것입니다. 80톤이 넘는 마해 부처님 세우는 일에 여러 가지 어려움이 있지만 정부와 불교계가 협력하여 그 방언을 마련하기 위해 최선을 다하고 있습니다. Speaking of splendor of Gandhara's Buddhist legacy, the rock face Buddha recently discovered in Korea comes to mind. the Joge order of Korean Buddhism. The largest Buddhist sect in Korea is most passionate about its faith Buddha at Nam Mountain in Gyeongju these days. Created in the 8th century and collapsed due to an earthquake in 1430, the image of Buddha carved on the rock cliff of Yoram Valley has been lying face down on the ground for more than 600 years, restoring to it its former, it is former grand world world entail number of challenges and it requires lifting the 80 ton slab of solid rock of the ground but the government the buddhist community and academia are working together to come up with a viable solution 다행히도 경주 남산 마해 부처님을 바로 세우기 위해 다양한 분야에서 연구를 거듭하여 진행될수록 불상의 기원과 함께 간다라에 대한 관심도 고조되고 있습니다 Fortunately, the public interest in Gandhara in general and the origins of Buddhist statue in particular is growing as researchers from the various disciplines are working to restore the rock face Buddha of Valley. 이러한 상황에서 한국의 불자들이 그렇게 뵙기를 열망하는 간다라 불교의 최고 최대의 대표작인 부처님의 고행상의 한국 전시가 이루어진다면 한국 불자는 물론 일반 국민들도 깊은 감명을 받을 것입니다. 곧 기회가 되어 한국에서 부처님 고행상을 직접 볼수 있기를 고대합니다. As such, if, if fasting Buddha, by far the most stunning representation of Gandhara Buddhism, is to be exhibited in Korea, it would be most enthusiastically welcomed by all citizens of Korea, whether they are Buddhist or not. I look forward to see fasting Buddha in Korea and to witness firsthand how deeply it will amaze all those who come face to face with it. 저는 이 컨퍼런스에 조계종단을 대표하여 참석하였습니다. 최근 파키스탄 정부에서 불교에 대한 이해 및 불교 유적지 발굴과 보존 활용에 대해 관심이 높은 것으로 알고 있습니다. 
한국 불교를 대표하여 우리 종단과 파키스탄의 주요 불교 유적, 유적지의 보존 및 복원에 관련하여 학술과 기술의 지원은 물론 인적 교류를 강화하고자 합니다. 또한 지속적인 교류를 통해 간다라 문화가 한국 불자들에게 잘 소개되어 간다라 불교에 대한 관심이 높아진다면 분명히 파키스탄 곳곳에 있는 불교 유적지를 찾아 나설 것입니다. 간다라 성지 순례가 하루빨리 이루어질 수 있도록 조계종단이 많은 노력을 기울이겠습니다. I am attending this conference on behalf of Choge Order of Korean Buddhism. We would like to offer academic and technical support as well as expert manpower for the preservation and restoration of major Buddhist sites in Pakistan. In addition, if interest in Gandhara Buddhism increases through exposures to Gandhara art, it will make the Buddhist sites in various parts of Pakistan popular pilgrimage destinations among Korean Buddhists. The Yoke order will certainly make a great effort to encourage its faithful to take such a journey to Pakistan so that they can experience first hand Buddha's practice and teaching. 오늘 이 컨퍼런스에서 나는 소중한 대화가 인연이 되어 간다라 불교 문화가 한반도에 전해질 때처럼 양국 간의 교류가 활발해지기를 기대합니다. 이 인연이 불교와 이슬람교 간의 우호 교류로 확대되고 나아가 양국 간의 경제 문화 교류로 증진되기를 기원합니다. I hope such conference exchanges between Pakistan and Korea. It will become as lively as it was when Gandhara Buddhism was first brought to Korean Peninsula. I hope that this relationship, this relationship will expand to friendly exchanges between Buddhism and Islam, as well as economic and cultural exchanges between the two countries. 감사합니다. Thank you so much. Thank you, MB. Uh, the people of Pakistan, they are already grateful for the Korean contribution to establish Gandhara Conservation Laboratory here in Pakistan for the preservation and conservation of Gandharan heritage in Pakistan. So uh, we'll go to the next panelist is Mo, most venerable Bhikshu Kondanya. Please come here and share your thoughts. Namutasa Lokahitasa Tathagatasa. I pay homage to the exalted one, enlightened one, to the Buddha. Respected Venerable Sangha, distinguished all prominent scholars, excellencies, moderator Dr. Abdul Shamat. First of all, I would like to say good morning and welcome to my presentation about the remarks. Let me sadhuad and thank you all for coming this historic and fruitful international Gandhara symposium for receiving this Gandhara civilization and Buddhist heritage in Pakistan. I'm very pleased to address this unique and important symposium, which has brought together so many eminent experts with associated. However, I'm not going to present power PowerPoint presentation. Therefore, I would like to humbly request to give hearing, hearing, and also concentrate with mindfulness. Pakistan is an important country in Southeast Asia since ancient times from different perspectives. Along with others, it served as essential point of Buddhism. In fact, Pakistan is considered the home to two major 
civilizations of the world, the Indus Valley and the Gandhara civilization. Buddhism in Pakistan took root in the third century BC under the Mauryan Emperor Ashoka. His rock edicts in Manshara and Sevaz Giri are evidence of the arrival of Buddhism in this region as early or middle of the third century BC. The Buddhists proudly associate Pakistan with the Indo-Greek king Menander, who established an empire which stretched from the Kabul River Valley, was a patron of Buddhism and in a way contributed to making of one of the major works of ancient this literature, which is known as Melinda Panya, Melinda Prashna. I would like to add that Mahayana Buddhism are one of the most prominent branches of Buddhism is believed to have originated in the region of Gandhara. Anyway, Buddhism thrived until the sixth century when the religion began to decline after the invasion by Alghon Huns. And by the end of the 14th century, Buddhism had largely disappeared following the Muslim conquest in the Indian subcontinent. Let me try to give a short descriptions of Gandhara. Gandhara nearly refers to the territory of comp comprised of Eastern Afghanistan and Northwestern Pakistan, including the Kabul Valley and modern district of Peshawar, Mardan, Swat and Burner, the territory south of the Hindu Kush and north of Punjab. However, Gandhara doesn't define a geographical territory. Similarly, it is evident that Gandhara was the gateway for spreading Buddhism to Central Asia and China. The Gandhara region has long been a crossroad of different cultural influences. In fact, it is known because of the art of this area, which flourished in this area in different time periods, Gandhara is important for the Buddhist mainly because in the long run, it has developed a special style of Buddhist art, which is generally known as the Gandhara art. And surprisingly, this field or style of art is rockly connected with the evolution of Buddhism here. Broadly speaking, Gandhara's Buddhist heritage flourished here between the third century BCE and the 10th century C. Buddhism as well as the Buddhist art started to fall by the fifth century According to the Chinese traveler Fai Xian, Huen Sang, I Jing, and Sung, Sung Yung, Buddhism declined in the north western parts of the Indian subcontinent between the fifth and eighth centuries. In addition, the most famous of all the Chinese pilgrims, Wen Shang, stated that there were around 1400s monasteries in Swat in the 7th century C. This confirmed the remains of the Buddhist period. Every, even today, over 400 Buddhist stupas and monasteries still can be seen in Swat. Later, in the wake of Alkan Hun's invasion from Central Asia, in the 6th century CE, Buddhism in Pakistan went through a deep decline. The Alkhon, under 
took the mass destructions of Buddhism, Buddhist monasteries and stupas at Takshila, Takshashila and the surrounding area. The Gandhara art is known to the world mainly because of its inter pretend of Buddhist legends. The Gandhara school incorporated many motifs and techniques from classical Roman art, including vine scrolls, cherubs, bearing garlands, fritons, and centaurs. The basic iconography, however, is said to have close remains relations with different Indian art schools. Without going to the details, I would like to mention some of the major Buddhist heritage of this region. Archaeological site of Khyber, Pakhtunkhwa, Punjab, Sindh, Balchotistan, Gilkrit, Baltistan, and many more are proudly exhibit their glorious history, which is rich with Buddhist and architecture, art and architecture. In fact, the Swat Valley has many Buddhist carvings and stupa, and Jalambad contains a seated Buddhist statue in Pakistan. Unfortunately, the Kushan era Buddhist stupas and status in Swat Valley were demolished by the Taliban extremists. They destroyed many of Pakistan's Buddhist artifacts left over from the Buddhist Gandhara civilization, especially in the Swat Valley. Pass is pass. It is pleasant that the government of Pakistan is now dedicated to preserve, preserving the Buddhist heritage in the country. And there are various Buddhist sites stupa, monasteries, viharas, settlements, caves, rocks, caring and inspirations are settled all over Pakistan. Such a Takshasila, the Takshasila Buddhist Museum, the fasting Buddha image in the Lahore Buddhist Museum, Takbahi in Khyber Pakistan, Pakhtumha, and the stupa in Swat Valley are Gilgrit Balistan. One of the benefits of preserving preservation of the Buddhist heritage in Pakistan must be opening the door to the tourism industry. These monasteries, stone carvings, or even scatter pieces of ancient images of Buddha are going to attract a flow of tourists mainly from the Buddhist countries and from all over the world in general. Picturesque are beautiful mountains and hills, sparkling lakes, rushing rivers, and streaming endless lost trees, and foliage, whole stories, and epics from the Buddhist traditions that can captivate visitors. It is unfortunate that many Buddhist art artifacts have been destroyed, but there are still plenty waiting to be preserved. The government of Pakistan is now actively working towards preserving this heritage. Pakistan should promote its rich history and Buddhist heritage to showcase its glorious past. This could open up opportunities to expand tourism, making Pakistan a new attraction for Buddhist tourists. It is the perfect time for Pakistan to capitalize on its Buddhist heritage and establish itself as a, as a significant destination for tourism. This way, Pakistan makes the world 
proud of our past civilizations. We are happy that the government of Pakistan now is working hard to preserve and promote its rich history so that the world can feel the glorious past in its wonderful Buddhist heritage. In fact, it is a matter of Gandhara, civilization which will give a new identity of Pakistan through the Buddhist heritage. This is the right time for Pakistan to work out opportunities to expand its tourism. And this way, Pakistan could become a new attraction for Buddhist tourism. I would just like to finish with the words of Buddha, Nahi Verena Verani, Sammanti the Kudachanam, Averena Sammanti, Esadhammo Sanantano. It means hatred doesn't cease by hatred, but only by love. This is eternal rules. Happiness will never come to those who fail to appreciate what they already have. Again, I would like to finish by thanking you all. Bhavatu Sabbamangalam. Thank you, Venerable Kondanya, for enlightening us about the history of Gandhara. We have the last panelist, uh, Venerable Dr. Kolanchia. Please uh, come here and share your thoughts. Could you please, can you play my presentation? <clears throat> Namotas Bhagoto Rato Sama Sambuddhas. Good morning, everybody. Respected monks, excellencies, scholars, erudite persons, executives, executives, and the organizing committee and other members and ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, everybody. I would like to, especially I would like to thanks to Pakistan government to organize like that uh, symposium in 2023. Especially my thanks given to the Pakistan government. Another thing is I would like to thanks to uh, Embassy of uh, Pakistan uh, Ambassador uh, to Sri Lanka. Uh, another my thanks goes to the Ministry of Buddha Sasan in Sri Lanka. Another thing is uh, actually uh, this event, uh, uh, most probably uh, he will he uh, uh, try to uh, join this uh, symposium uh, of uh, Kirindi Asaji Pera uh, to Gangaram Temple. I already uh, thanks for the uh, Reverend uh, Asaji Thera also. Uh, so he couldn't uh, visit and uh, participate this event, so I uh, come to the this uh, symposium. Uh, this time is my second time to visit the uh, Pakistan in earlier 2021. I already visited uh, uh, Pakistan. I stayed in Serena Hotel and then I went to the Gandhara, Taxiland, Swat, and any other uh, Buddhist places to. Uh, I already visited there. So at that time, uh, our, another monks also told you, uh, according to the, our chronicles, we heard about that uh, some kind of Taxila, Gandhara, and other uh, uh, Buddhist countries, uh, uh, including the Pakistan, but we never visited the Gandhara and Takshila in earlier. But uh, fortunately, we can now see the Gandhara and visit the Gandhara and the worship the Gandhara truth relic also. Uh, then I think uh, it is a, a good opportunity to, uh, for the uh, Gandhara civilization to open doors for the world. Uh, so uh, they are uh, organizing uh, some kind of uh, symposium. Uh, this uh, this uh, symposium uh, topic is reviving Gandhara civilization and Buddhist heritage in Pakistan. According to this uh, topic, 
my uh, topic is celebrating Pakistan Buddhist heritage. According to that, I would like to explain, explain some kind of things uh, according to the uh, our books and uh, other articles. Could you please send them? Yeah. The historical Gandhara was a great nation filled with uh, priceless cultural value. Also, it was a land of immeasurable uh, trade value in the ancient world. Gandhara also belongs to the Indus Valley civilization, considered as a highly developed civilization existed in the ancient world. The unique thinking of the people of Gandhara who lived in an era as early as 2000 and 1050 BC is 500 BC in cited in the Rig Veda among the historical Veda book. It is the most important Veda books in the Rig Veda in the Sanskrit. Uh, there is also mentioned in the Gandhar. This philosophy of Gandhar has been subject to the immense uh, reverence of the uh, intellectual of the world. The uh, Mahabharata written by the Vyasa considered as the great philosophical text of India also described the Gandhar and the kings who ruled there. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, this is the Mahabharata. The city of Puspapura belonging to the Gandhara mentioned in it has been identified as the city of Peshawar in present Pakistan. Represents uh, re represents about Gandhara can be found in the great epic Ramayana composed by Valmiki as well. Considered geographically, the historical land of Gandhar had been spread over the river valleys of Kabul and Swat. Gandhar was also nourished by the uh, tributaries of the river Kabul, uh, Chenab, and Ravi uh, rivers. Can you see that? <clears throat> By the 6th century BC, the land of Gandhar was one of the 16 great Janapadas. In ancient time, we, it calls the kingdom, 16 kingdoms uh, of ancient India. It is evident from the Buddhist literature that Gandhar had been linked with many important events of the Buddhist history. <clears throat> uh, there is a can see in the 16 kingdoms in uh, earlier uh, 16 Janapadas. It was a great fortune of historical Gandhara that is was situated in the world famous ancient Silk Road. The main reason for this was the Gandhara was situated between the Middle East, Central Asia and India in uh, interconnected by the Silk Road. Can you see the Silk Road? Huh? This is the Silk Road. Gandhara had been a very important cultural and trade hub situated in the Silk Route due to, the, uh, due to this. The fragrance made in Gandhara were very popular in the ancient world. There is a, some kind of fragrance uh, uh, bottles and other things we can see. <clears throat> can you please? Venerable monks, great philosophers, as well as intellectuals continually traveled along the Silk Road, seeing the knowledge in Buddhist, Buddhism. Many of them arrived at Gandhara, uh, the Chinese monk, Pashian, who came to Sri Lanka in search of Buddhism in the fourth century AD, and monk Hunshang, Hunshang, who came to India in the seventh century AD, were such venerable monks. We can see some kind of Pashian and other. The marks there. <clears throat> Gandhar received the light of Buddhism since the 6th century BC, during which Gautama the Buddha was alive. Hence, ancient Gandhar was never short of great Buddhist intellectual and Buddhist devotees. This Buddhist philosophy has influenced greatly towards the civilization of Gandhar. It is mainly the Buddhist heritage that has been un earth by the archaeologist excavation of Gandhar in the present day. This is influence can be identified in, in all elements, including architecture, sculptures, and paintings. Can you play it, please? Yeah. In the Buddhist ruins of Gandhar, some kind of ruins, 
The Buddha statue received a unique place among the uh, sculptures and carvings of ancient Gandhara, especially the whole art of uh, sculpture is influenced by the Greek art. The uh, gracefulness, rhythm, beauty, per 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 perfection, as well as the characteristic of statues are depicted in the uh, sculpture of Gandhara. The curly hair in the sculptures of Gandhara is another feature of this Greek influence. There's a human statue of Gandhara, you can see. <clears throat> Amal amalgamating all these features, the Buddha statues created by the artists of Gandhara are considered to be the most beautiful sculptures of the Buddha in the whole world. The way, uh, the, way the serena beauty of the Gautama Buddha has been portrayed by the artists of Gandhara while uh, re retaining the Greek influence of excellence. Uh, there is a canvas from Buddhist statue. The seated statue in various postures, standing uh, statues, as well as the ones depicting various incidents in the life of the Buddha, including the preaching of Dhamma to the five uh, disciples, Mark. The Mahaparinirvana, the conception of birth of the Mahabodhisattva, can be seen among the Buddha statues of Gandhara. <clears throat> A very rare and excellent statues of the uh, Buddha in the whole world depicting the six years of Duskara Kriya or the self mortification by the Mahabodhisattva before achieving enlightenment was also found in the land of Gandhara. Duskara. <clears throat> the carving of the skinny body of the Mahabodhisattva with the uh, protruding skeleton uh, entwined with the veins of brilliant, the portraying of the unwearying the determination in the pace of the Mahabodhisattva among uh, all the suffering had uh, added to the greatness of this statue. Due to all these features, the Buddha statues of uh, uh, Gandhara are unique in the whole world. These are referred to as the Gandhara features by the uh, critics. These Gandhara features have influenced the creations of Buddha statues in the other Buddhist countries as well, uh, well in Sri Lanka. Where are the greatest Buddha statues of the uh, world exist? Uh, the 42 feet all Aukana Buddha uh, statues in excellent creation influenced by the Gandhara scripture. There is a, a very famous statue in Sri Lanka in Aukana statue. This is the statue of that uh, Sri Lankan. Uh, it is also some kind of influence uh, to the Gandhara uh, artistic work. Uh, in addition to sculpture, the specimens were found from archaeological excavation to the show that the Buddhist paintings of Gandhara also were at a very grand level. The excellent painting on the stone slab depicting the uh, Tasker Nalagiri, uh, who came uh, agitated to destroy the Buddha after drinking toddy, being tamed, kneeling down at the feet of the Buddha is an uh, uh, example to it. <clears throat> yeah, there is a sum. Okay. Considered as the world first university by many academics, the University of Taxila was an incomparable heritage endowed to the world by the historical Gandhara. It was a Buddhist university constructed in the 6th century BC, even at present the uh, city of Taxila, where the renowned uh, University of Taxila of the ancient world existed, is called by the same name the ruins of the buildings of the Taxila University uh, unearthed by the archaeological excavation haven't seen pursued now. We can see the Taxila University. Yeah. Thank you. The historical Gandhara was involved in a number of important events coming in the Buddhist literature, especially they are linked with the eminent intellectuals and the devotees originated in Gandhara. After hearing about the Buddha during the period of the living Buddha, Pukkusati, who went on the long travel to the land of Magadha, dressed as a monk to see the Buddha, was a king of Gandhara. This dev devotee who ca came to see the Buddha living behind the royal uh, riches has met the Buddhas at a pottery in the uh, uh, Magadha. 
this great man who gained the state of uh, anagami after listening to the buddha's dhamma went in search of robes and uh, other essentials to be ordained as a buddhist monk he had to die during his trip attacked by a cow buddha proclaimed that uh, that this esteemed person was born in a holy place and will achieve nirvana end in the samsara there can you see that pukusati ah yeah a very important debate of dam the even questions of king milinda our nepal monks also mentioned about that uh, milinda mentioned in the buddhist literature also has occurred in the sagalapura of gandhara the king milinda lived in gandhara he was uh, more names Mil, uh, minanda milinda is the magadi form of his name he has been born in the village of kalasi in the alishandha island in the 2nd century bc the uh, island of alishandha has existed between the river of chenab and ravi in gandhara an intellectual and the great debate king milinda was finally defeated by erudite scholars monks named nagasena can you see that nagasena yeah. <coughs> Since the ancient era, Gandhar has been famous for very beautiful women. Many rich young men and the royal princes have found their wives from Gandhar. The uh, Kusa Jataka story in the Buddhist literature it is very famous in Sri Lanka also. It's an example to this. The prince Kusa mentioned here finds Princess Pabavati as beautiful as a golden statue from the Sagalapura and Gandhar. The statues of females. painting as well as the female jewelry found the archaeological excavation conducted by the government of pakistan bear evidence to this also can you see oh, yeah <clears throat> the ancient city of sagalapura is presented known as uh, sialkot the uh, academic explain that the name sagala in magadi has become sial and kotak has uh, become khot <clears throat> Accordingly, Gandhar can be identified as an area inherited with the excellent civilization of the world. This excellence is mainly due to the influence of the Buddhist philosophy. The invaluable ruins of the buildings and uh, universities belonging to uh, historical Gandhar with great archaeological value have been unearthed and uh, uh, conserved now. The innumerable works. of art including the various buddha statues found there portray uh, the uh, unparalleled skill of the artist gandhar in that era this glorious and historical buddhist civilization of gandhar is a silent symbol of the unique world heritage of the human beings uh, I, i would like to explain some kind of the, the government of pakistan uh, presently deserve the respect of the world uh, for preserving his heritage and opening the way to the world tourists as well as buddhist devotees to see it it is great pleasure to uh, opening doors for the gandhar civilization to all the buddhist and the world people to uh, see and worship another thing is i would like to if you uh, try to promote uh, this gandhar civilization and the buddhism in uh, pakistan i would like to suggest some kind of suggestion five suggestions uh, according to that uh, uh, you can uh, do something to uh, in near future i think it's better to uh, you uh, i think uh, in every buddhist country have some kind in china sri lanka uh, laos burma and other countries have uh, buddhist associations if you can uh, open a, i start a buddhist association in pakistan buddhist association it is most important things for the uh, like this one uh, symposium and the, some kind of events they can organize and do everything and another thing i would like to uh, uh, suggest uh, in the world according to our chronicles we know only uh, buddha has a forty tooth but he has only four tooth Uh, in this world now one is heaven one is cobra's world another thing is another one is in 
uh, Sri Lanka in Kandy, so many uh, scholars visited. Another one is the most important one is the Gandhara. Earlier I went, uh, came here in Taxila. I saw that uh, tooth relic inside the cupboard in the Taxila Museum. You no need to put into the cupboard. Please take it out and put in the truth relic palace. Most of the people in the world, Buddhist people are come and worship. Actually in Sri Lanka also, we can't see our truth relic inside. After five years, we can see and worship the truth relic. If you can uh, reflection, they are so built a truth relic palace, then it's more important and most uh, Buddhist people and world people come to uh, uh, Pakistan and worship uh, that the uh, truth relic. It is most important. I think the starting point, it will be the starting point, then you, you can success your aim. Anything I would like to uh, suggest uh, some uh, 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 in India and the Sri Lanka and uh, so many Buddhist countries, there is uh, some kind of Buddhist places uh, surrounding, they are giving some chance to build uh, their uh, country-wise, uh, some kind of Buddhist temples there. If you can give us some chance to land to build uh, China, Korea, Japan, Sri Lanka, and other countries to give some land to build uh, according to their uh, tradition to temple, then so many people are uh, believing they can stay there and uh, can worship there. It is also a very good idea to uh, develop the tourism and the Buddhism in Pakistan. Another thing is, uh, uh, I would like to uh, inform you to give scholarships to Buddhist countries, people to come and hear then study uh, in your universities also, do some research and other things. It is also very important. Another thing is, I think it's uh, in a, uh, every year you can organize like this symposium. Most of the uh, erudite person and scholars come gather here and they already uh, uh, spread their views to uh, in their countries. No problem. You can go to Pakistan, worship there. Uh, you can visit there and everything. It is the most important thing. Another thing I think it's better to give uh, good archaeologists to uh, chance to uh, come here and do excavation and uh, uh, some kind of uh, article works and uh, excavation to them. Then they will uh, publish in the good journal, in the recognized journal then it will be the good idea for the uh, improving the uh, Buddhist uh, dev devotees and other world to come to the Pakistan. Thank you so much, all of them. Thank you, Venerable, at the end for these wonderful suggestions. Here we reached at the end of the session one, and we are very much grateful to all the panelists for sharing their knowledge. And unfortunately, due to time issues, we have to skip the question and answer session and we go directly to the 10 minutes tea break. So we can discuss our question and answer during the tea break. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I would request you to please, uh, please bring your tea at your seat. Uh, please. Dr. Umar Tharad, to please come, come up stage. Dr. Tharad. Because the time is over, so we want to start the session with the session. Okay, first of all, a small request is that the Hazrat who are standing here in this corner, please settle down and give your attention to the media. And the media's friends are asking that you go there. Because the people in the back are having problems. Dr. Tharad, please come up to the stage. I would request the media to please come up to the stage. I would request the media to please come up to the stage. To please go that side, so that people don't have a problem. You people, uh, please, these people who are sitting behind me, my request is that you all are hosts. 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 
डॉक्टर नदीम तारर डॉक्टर तारर प्लीज कम कम अप फिर डॉक्टर साहब डॉक्टर साहब गायब हो गए डॉक्टर नदीम तारर ये स्पीकर्स का चेंज करें टैग यहाँ पे स्पीकर्स टैग चेंज करें डॉक्टर साहब आप यहाँ पे आ जाएंगे तो हम शुरू करते हैं मीडिया प्लीज ये इस कॉर्नर में जगह खाली करेंगे ताकि मीडिया के लोग यहाँ पे आ जाएं प्लीज ठीक है ये सारे लोग जो लेफ्ट पे खड़े हैं काइंडली अगर ये जगह मीडिया के लिए खाली कर दें मीडिया को मीडिया पीपल कैन गो देर आप पीछे लोगों का असल में व्यू हिंडर करते हैं आप इधर चले जाएंगे तो आसानी हो जाएगी आपके लिए मैनेजमेंट ये मैनेजमेंट के लोग भी ना तारिक इनको बताइए प्लीज ये उधर चले जाएं और प्लीज ये जगह खाली करेंगे तो मीडिया के लोग यहां पे आएंगे तारिक सब शुरू शुरू कर देंगे ना जब ऊपर बुलाएंगे ना people standing at the back i request you all to please be seated people sir aa gaye se to mera session shuru kar please ladies and gentlemen we will now begin with our session 2 the ushers ko bolenge usher se इफ्तार साहब इधर इधर आइएगा I request speakers of the session, session two, title Gandhara Civilization, celebrating Pakistan Buddhist heritage, to please come on the stage. Most venerable Dr. Thik Duk Thien, venerable Sujiva Thero, venerable Ashan Subita, venerable Thik Le Kwanchuk, and venerable Song Yin Jeet. I request all the speakers, speakers of session two, to please come on the stage. I request Gotham ushers to please help people settle down. Please make people settle down on that side of. Speakers of session two, Gandhara civilization celebrating Pakistan's Buddhist heritage. Most venerable Dr. Thik Duk Thien, venerable Sujiva Thero, venerable Ashan Subita, venerable Thik Le Kwanchuk, and venerable Song Jin Jeet. I request you all to please come on the stage.
جی خواتین و حضرات میری آپ سے گزارش ہے کہ پلیز آپ اپنی نشستوں پہ تشریف رکھیے پروگرام شروع ہونے والا ہے سیشن ڈیلے ہو رہا ہے لیڈیز اینڈ جنٹل مین آئی ووڈ ریکویسٹ یو ٹو پلیز ٹیک یور سیٹ اینڈ آئی ول ارج دی ڈسٹنگوش پارٹیسپینٹس ٹو کم آن دا فلور یہ میڈیا پلیز آپ آپ باہر کر لیں آپ باہر کر لیں پلیز اب انوش کا دن پر بلا لیں میں پھر دوبارہ میں آ جاؤں آپ بلا نہیں سکتے I request speakers of the session two, most venerable Dr. Thik Dukthi, venerable Sujiva Thero, venerable Ashan Sobita, venerable Thik Lek Wanchok, and venerable Yong Sinji to please come on the stage. Speakers of session two, most venerable Dr. Thik Thi, venerable Sujiva Thero, venerable Ashan Sobita, venerable Thin Lek Wanjok, and venerable Yong Sin Ji, please come on the stage. speakers of session two gandhara civilization celebrating pakistan buddhist heritage یہ پلیز یہ والی جگہ خالی کر دیں اس کارن سے اگر یہ جگہ خالی ہو جائے آئی ریکویسٹ یو پلیز یہ خالی کر دیں آئی ریکویسٹ اینربل آشن سبیتا تو پلیز کم آن اسٹیج Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with our session two. The session is titled Gandhara Civilization, Celebrating Pakistan's Buddhist Heritage. 
The moderator of the session is Dr. Nadeem Omar. Dr. Omar holds a PhD from University of New South Wales, Sydney, Australia, and postdoctoral fellowship MIT USA. He has worked as a postdoctoral researcher at the School of Oriental and African Studies, SOAS London. He has served as the executive director, Center for Cultural and Development, Islamabad, and a founder member of Gandhara Resource Center, Islamabad. Sir, I hand the floor over to you. Uh, before we uh, begin the uh, session, I would really request media to please quiet down. I would urge the participants to please settle down. Meri apne Pakistani bhen bhaiyon se guzarish hai ke wo please apne nishisnoon par baith jaiye. Meri media se guzarish hai ke please apni ye proceeding 10 minute baad kar lein. Lunch hour mein aapko pura time hoga. Am I being heard? Please, I would request media to move away out of the hall. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Now, the title of this session is Gandhara Civilization, Pakistan, Celebrating Pakistan's Buddhist Heritage. Uh, in the first session, we also discussed the merits of Pakistan's Buddhist civilization which is, uh, you know, for which Gandhara heritage is known worldwide. And it is very prominent in part of the collection in all the world museums. So Pakistan, you know, people in the world may not know of Pakistan, but they must have heard of Gandhara. So Gandhara is something that has almost become synonymous with, with this glorious Buddhist heritage, right? With these words, I would... Uh, you know, urge my speakers uh, to uh, restrict their presentation, their comments to five to 10 minutes in the economy of time. And uh, hopefully, opportunity for interaction and dialogue during the course of the day. And I think your presentation will give us that introduction that we need on, on on all of us so we know who you are what you think what is your take on pakistan's buddhist heritage and how we can move forward together right now the first one on the list is most vulnerable dr t du thin he is the vice president and the secretary general of executive council of national vietnam buddhist sangha He's also the vice rector of Vietnam Buddhist University, Hanoi, and senior lecturer in the Tran Nan Tong Academic Institute for the Vietnam National University, Hanoi. Uh, I would really uh, welcome the most vulnerable. Either he would like to come here and present, or you would like to uh, stay seated. Please come to the rostrum. Let's welcome most vulnerable. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, moderator. Yes. Uh, uh, most valuable, valuable monks of Sangha, uh, Excellencies, uh, distinguished uh, professors, scholars, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I could like to thank Dr. Talas Sabir, Director of the China Pakistan. Uh, st study center of uh, ISSI and the embassy of Pakistan in Hanoi to inviting me to participate and also uh, stand before you to uh, have a speech at the very meaningful the conference uh, Gandaha Symposium. Um, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in uh, uh, my knowledge, uh, uh, the rich uh, tapestry of history, Pakistan stands as a land of cultural diversity, where it grows up ancient civilization, resolves through times. One such remarkable legacy lies in the profound influence of Buddhism which flourished in this region centuries ago. Buddhism has played a significant role in shaping the history and culture of what is now Pakistan. 
lasted for more than 10th century from around 800 BC to 500 C. Pakistan is uh, blessed with rich cultural heritage and is known as the card of civilization, especially the Gandhara civilization of Buddhism. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, peace is a timeless aspiration that transcends boundaries and unites humanity in its pursuit. The interwinning threat of Pakistan Buddhist heritage offer a unique pathway to peace, not only in its historical context, but also in its contemporary relevance. Unveiling Pakistan's Buddhist legacies unveils a tree of interconnected narrative embodying the shared inspiration for harmony and tranquility. The remnants of magnificent Buddhist sites scattered across the picture square landscapes of Pakistan beckon us to explore the essence of peace that emulated from their foundations. These sites serve as silent witnesses to the interplay of cultures, the exchange of ideas, and the pursuit of spiritual enlightenment. The significance of Pakistan Buddhist legacy extends far beyond its historical values. It brings the possibility to encourage tolerance, dialogue, and quite coexistence in the present day context. By rediscovering and maintaining this heritage, Pakistan can rekindle a sense of shared humanity, transcending diverse and cultural differences. It provides a bridge to adverse interfering harmony, letting different communities appear together and be wish in meaningful conversation that pave the way for shared knowledge and respect. In addition, Pakistan Buddhist heritage contains invaluable lessons of nonviolent compassion and awareness. The teaching and philosophy of Buddhism resonates throughout the age and can inspire individuals and communities to adopt a peaceful way of life. By exploring the teachings, we discover the compassion of inner peace and the transformative power of the art of self-expression, which ultimately lead to more harmonious coexistence in society. Beyond the realm of spirituality and personal development, Pakistan Buddhist heritage is also vast. It shows potential for economic development and education. Preserving and promoting the ancient site as cultural treasure attracts global attention and promotes tourism, creating economic opportunities for local communities. Moreover, the economic study of this heritage provides fertile ground for scholars and researchers to discover the historical nuance of artist expression and religious practice of ancient civilization. We aim to explore a more harmonious relationship between the worlds. We embrace the opportunity to cultivate peace within ourselves by releasing Pakistan Buddhist heritage and creating a transformative ripple effect thus reverberates beyond 
the border of this glorious land, Pakistan. As the custodian of this preserved heritage, Pakistan recognized the transformative power it possesses. The Pakistan government and its international partners have taken significant steps to preserve and promote this ancient Buddhist site. Pakistan moved arms to create a platform for cross-cultural dialogue and promote mutual respect and understanding along countries. Revealing Pakistan Buddhist heritage invited academic historians and enthusiasts worldwide to engage in research, collaboration, and knowledge exchange through intellectual endeavors like this, we can uncover hidden stories from the past challenges, preconceived lessons, embrace diversity, foster unity, and ultimately pave the way for a more peaceful future. It is a, con it is a collective responsibility that transcends borders, cultures, and religions. It conveys a broad message of tolerance and coexistence by acknowledging and celebrating Pakistan's Buddhist heritage. We build bridge better than words. We seek to increase in understanding rather than permanently devise. Exploring Pakistan Buddhist heritage should stimulate curiously the meaningful dialogue and a spirit of collaboration. Let us begin this early with peace, respect, shared heritage principles. As we explore the hidden treasure of the past, we invite all to seek wisdom and build a sustainable, peaceful future of harmony and compassion. It teaches us to develop empathy, find inner peace, and extend that peace to the world around us. As we explore Pakistan Buddhist heritage, we discover archaeological wonders such as ancient monastic structure, sacred artifacts that testify the profound influence of Buddhism in the region. It's the path that leads to a deeper understanding of the diverse cultural territory that unites our global society. This study allows us to transcend religious and geographical boundaries and embrace the common human experience that connect us all. Through this lens, we understand that peace extends beyond the absence of conflict. Respect is the condition under which dialogue and cooperation thrive. Pakistan Buddhist heritage attests the ability of ancient wisdom to lead us to more peaceful and connected world. It's the action to action that embraced the legacy values and encouraged them to build a lasting path of unity, compassion, and peace for generations to come. Let us continue and to follow in the footsteps of our forefathers and explore Pakistan Buddhist heritage and the path of peace. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the great religion of Buddhism, which starts in India and Pakistan, has been seen as a stronghold of Mahayana Buddhism and the second holy land of Buddhism in history, has made its way to Vietnam more than 2,000 years ago, following the maritime trade route and also sea road. Right from the beginning, it has played an important role 
in the spiritual life of the Vietnamese people and stood as strong testimony to civilizational and cultural linkages. As a strongly Buddhist country and striving to uphold and spread the global idea of Lord Buddha, the National Vietnam Buddhist Sangha has always been active, proactive, promoting mutual understanding, increasing tolerance and dialogue in the spirit of understanding and respect among beliefs, religions, backgrounds, and different culture for the world peace. In conclusion, my speech, I highly appreciate the China-Pakistan Study Center, ISSI, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Pakistan for their support in organizing. In the present context, more than ever, we need to strengthen the education of people about religious tolerance in order to build a peaceful world together. We wish you all good health, happiness, success under the blessing of Lord Buddha and God. Thank you for, thank you for your listening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Most Honorable, for your illuminating speech. Uh, it is always a pleasure uh, to hear from our fellow brethren from across the world when they speak so highly of uh, Buddhism. Is that you? Thank you. So when they speak highly of the Gandhara heritage that essentially uh, belongs to Buddhism, but we also are inheritor of this glorious tradition that we uh, cannot be, uh, you know, you know, proud enough. So with these words, I would invite my second speaker, Venerable Velvita Sijiva Thiro. Uh, Venerable Thiro is the coordinator of Buddhist activities, Ministry of Buddhist Sasana, Religious and Cultural Affairs. He is the deputy principal of Mount Lavina Buddhist Institute, Colombo, affiliated with Malawata Chapter of Buddhism. Most of all, please welcome. Namo tasse Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhase. Bless all you. Good afternoon. Venerable Maha Sangha, distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen. This occasion is very important for all us. We are very thankful to Sri Lanka, Pakistan Ambassador and Pakistan government and Institute strategic, strategic, strategic Studies in Islamabad for inviting to this Gandhar Symposium to make few words about Gandhar civilization and celebrating Pakistan's Buddhist heritage. So, Pakistan is an important country when studying ancient Buddhist art and culture and Buddhist heritage. Especially the Gandhar region, which is currently located in Pakistan, is significant. It stretches 100 kilometers towards east and west from the western Hindu river and 70 kilometers towards north and south. It is covered with mountain from three sides. In early day, the main city was Purshapuraya, which is currently known as Preshavo. You know Gandhar located. When Buddhism is in Pakistan is considered Takshila city is an important place. It is located 35 kilometers away from Islamabad, Lord Buddha before enlightenment during his childhood learned all art and skills from a teacher known as Disapamok who lived in Thaksala city. 
it was one of the main cities in the gandhar area where so many scholars reside those days most high class people of of the society received education from centers established in this city the most ancient taxila buddhist university was also placed in this city do you know taxila university is very ancient university in in the world buddhist university and most scholars in lived there for mastering buddhist art and culture and architecture this city is plays a major role with more than 50 archaeological artifacts distributed over 30 kilometers some important artifact include dharmarajika stupa and temple complex bihir mount sirikap chandiyar temple and jolian jolian temple so you can can you play the presentation there are historic historical facts that confirm king ashoka made a huge contribution to promote and spread buddhism based on this city in 3rd century bc in 218 bc king ashoka convened a dhamma council with the participation of 1000 buddhist monk and sent buddhist missionaries to nine countries in order to spread buddhism as a result of that gandhar happened to be one country out of that nine it was clear yes it was clear that buddhism was more popular after first century bc in gandhar it was very popular until 11th century bc and the period between first century to fifth century is known as golden era after 11th century due to invasion by foreign army buddhism slowly disappeared from gandhar in earlier in earlier days entire city of gandhar was a buddhist city and contributed as a center of spreading mahayana buddhism one of the important buddhist ruins in gandhar include takkibai temple complex which is located 8 kilometers from peshawar you can see in screen this was rediscovered in early 20th century by unesco and was named as a world heritage that is world heritage world heritage site in 1980 which provides evidence on day evidence one day to live of people those days the ancient coins found from this place give proof that this was inhabited by buddhist and hindu people in the temple complex there were halls or passages to pass air and small cages on the wall to light lamps according to the description by a chinese traveler song yong this city was one of one of the main places which was located along the path of commercial road to india this city was well protected from great wall around the city and in north there are were four doors the buddhist ruins of takibai include many architectural monuments including stupa large building and temple complex in 1871 sajan wilcher discovered many buddha statues from takibai some statues represented lord buddha's life even ten others are bodhisattvas 
In stupas, there are small hole like sections from three sides, and archaeologists believe that space was allocated for Buddha statues. In the north side, the monastery consisted of two stories buildings. It consisted of kitchens, dansala means arms house, and open areas. In addition, Buddhism was spread to Swat and Mingora areas where many ruins of Buddhist temples can be found at present as well. Gandhara Buddhist art is special. The unique Buddhist art style can be studied from many days as it extends towards broader subjects area. Gandharan art, also known as Greek Buddhist art, is a multi-ethnic style of Buddhist art that developed in the Gandhara region and Peshawar city especially. The style of Greek Roman origin seems to have flourished largely during the Kushan dynasty in first century BC. They sculpture a Buddha, Buddha statue for the first time during the reign of King Kanishka Buddha image was carved in, into gold coin for the first time. It is very important. The statue in Gandhara are of unique style and characteristic. They are more similar to sta statues of Greek and Rome gods. These statues depict the skill of the sculpture. Among them, Hotimandar Buddhist statue, Thakibai Buddhist statue, Shari Bahal Buddhist statue, and statue that depict self-homoeticization. Self it is Dushkara Kriya are significant. Also, the carving on stone are very remarkable artifacts. The birth of Prince Siddhartha, enlightenment of Buddha, and defeating Mara Dutas, Mara Parajami, are notable out of them. So accordingly, it is evident that Gandhara region of Pakistan is historically important with ancient Buddhist ruins, which are more than 2,300 years old, spread throughout the area. This is not only important to Buddhist, not important to Buddhist, but it is a heritage site, heritage site to the entire world. Thus, it is our responsibility to talk after and maintain for the sake of the next generation. Sri Lanka being a neighbor Buddhist country, we extend our fullest cooperation for achieving the goal. Pakistan is our brother, brother country. I would like to thank Pakistan for still being Muslim. I am really pleased, really pleased and satisfied to see the initiative that Pakistan has taken to review the Gandhara. And it is a your resource. I would like to thank all of you Pakistans. This protect you and to world. So it is, uh, there are more brother countries, your brother countries. So let's be together and protect them. Thank you so much. Sabbe Satta Bhavantu Sukitatta. May all beings be happy. Thank you very much.
thank thank you honorable uh, for uh, for shedding light on the buddhist heritage of pakistan i mean i'm sure uh, you must have realized that given the uh, given the huge number the huge turnout here a lot of the audience is deeply interested in pakistan's buddhist heritage and gandhara is not like a you know foreign country for them so the, the, we all of us have been visiting admiring appreciating this buddhist heritage of pakistan and it is high time that state of pakistan has actually uh, you know taken ownership of this initiative which is being uh, conducted under the straight patronage so apart from the academics and the archaeologists i mean there is a huge uh, you know lay public which is also interested in reclaiming pakistan's ancient heritage and uh, sri lanka has always been a strong support for pakistan and sri lankan high commission has always uh, extended its fullest cooperation in helping us uh, you know celebrate visak day in pakistan for the last, last several years uh, although cambodia and vietnam have been little sort of uh, you know far behind in uh, thailand and uh, uh, sri lanka but and nepal and so we are really grateful that uh, you know scholars are also taking monks are also taking interest in pakistan buddhist heritage and i also must tell pakistani audience that the uh, the that the monks from the buddhist world are highly educated people i mean when i look at the profile of all these distinguished uh, guests one realizes that you know invariably every second third person has a phd right and they are uh, have a phd and they are also teaching in various universities and i think i am also represent a university of wa here so i think it will be crucially important that that our universities are able to you know create linkages uh, you know with this body of monks uh, in the buddhist world so we learn and appreciate this heritage better right now with this i would uh, like to invite our third speaker who is a venerable uh, ashin sabuta he is also a phd and he has been teaching in several buddhist universities and is currently affiliated with budgaya monastery manama please welcome all distinguished uh, guests and in diplomats and in government officials and uh, ladies and gentlemen and the audience of the pakistan in the people kote abdanu <clears throat> I do not take it too much time because you, I think you are boring to be sitting on the floor because you have been sitting on the floor for about four hours eh? since the morning time. So I do not take it the so long time. I would like to express my deeply thanks to the. government of pakistan and the ministry of the tourism and the the organizers who held this gandara symposium in 2023 <clears throat> i came from myanmar <clears throat> so as you know the myanmar now leading buddhist country in the world and in the buddhist literature and in learning and in teaching the buddhist literature as a development and mm and also <clears throat> as for me i never been to pakistan this is the first time for me and i'm interested to go to the islamabad and to be visited to the Kandara heritage and in Taksila, Mathura Giza city and in other same religious sites. Since my childhood, I about 
I'm going to know about the taxi law and Gandhara. Whenever I study the Buddhist literature, because in the Buddhist literature, about the Gandhara and about the taxi law are mentioned in so many places. It is a very significant for the Buddhist people to come to here to pay homage to the religious society, especially Buddhist religious society. And uh, Why and when Buddhism came to Pakistan? Actually, in the third century BC, there was a game called the Asagar, who ruled the India continents for many years. During, during the time of Asagar, he, at the third great council, was held during the time of Asoka. After the third great council, the king Asoka sent missionary monks to the nine different places, places to the India continent. Among of them, the Medjantika Tira, Pandi Mijantika was sent to the Kashmir and Gandhara to propagate the teachings of the Buddha. From that time onwards, Buddha was a Florence and Gandhara now called in Pakistan. After 12th century AD, Due to many reasons, due to different reasons, Buddhism has gradually declined day by day and year by year. Now, the government of the Pakistan has tried to discover the heritage, the Buddhist heritage, and uh, to pay knowledge and awareness to the people who are living around the world, especially adored, especially Buddhist people. So I would like to say a great thing to the government of Pakistan, especially to the archaeological, the debat, archaeological departments, and also the officers, the officers and the authority concerns in this uh, government of Pakistan. So we are required to make the cooperation to be successful whatever we dream in our life. And in this morning session, or Mr. Ramesh Kumar has said the Gandhara heritage, the developing of the Gandhara heritage is his dream. Gandhara heritage, the religious sites must be developing, must be flourishing, must be popular. It is his dream that he said in this morning session, I heard about it that I wish to be so as soon as, as quickly as possible as. Because as you know, in our country, the people of our country, they are interested to, be, to visit to the religious side, especially to the Tekshila. Because the people of the Myanmar, in their childhood, they have to study about the Taxila. Taxila, the University of the Asian Taxila is very famous in Myanmar. 
since the childhood, uh, we, our childhood, uh, we have, uh, we heard about uh, this, uh, we have to learn about the textile. So I would like to pay advice to the authority concerned who promote this Gandhara heritage to be popular around the world. Uh, the first one is that to give the educated security to the pilgrim group who can, who will come from around the world. And also, and invite to the travel agents in the respected country, especially Myanmar, Thailand, and Cambodia, for example. For example, on last, last year, I think August or September, the embassy of the Pakistan in Myanmar, they invited all the men, uh, they invited all the men and uh, uh, travel agents, travel agents, and they promote, they promoted the awareness, the awareness, and they invited to the travel agent to to here. The most important thing is that travel agents may have awareness about the Gandhara region and in the about the culture of the uh, Pakistani people. If they going to know more and more. They were well interested in to pay the homage to pay, uh, to visit uh, to the Kandara region also. Huh? So Kandara is the significance not only for Buddhists but also for the for other people, especially to the people of the Pakistan. Because you know, Buddhism arrived to the Pakistan after that great concert. King Asoka sending his missionary to the here, to here. And uh, so the people of the here, their ancestral, their ancestral, their father and their grandfather and their mother from uh, before 11th century AD and uh, supported to the Buddhism, supported to the Buddhism and studied the Buddhist literature. And uh, due to many different reasons, uh, the Buddhism declined uh, here, but uh, the Buddhist heritage site uh, is uh, protected, properly protected by the government of the Pakistan. So I deeply thank uh, to the government of Pakistan for protecting to the religious sites of the Pakistan. And uh, in conclusion, The opportunity and the challenges of the to promote the tourism, tourism business here in this Pakistan. The opportunity is now you are invited to the Buddhist monk and the Buddhist people from the Myanmar, Thailand, and Cambodia. We definitely, whenever we arrive back to our country, we will deliver the message to the people of the, our country and uh, to give the awareness of how about the Pakistan that we should be, we should visit to the religious society, especially to the Gandhara region and something like that, something like that. And we promise to that, we promise that. And uh, also, I will write some articles about the Gandhara in my country with the English in my language to, aware, to give the awareness about the Gandhara and to promote the religious tourism in Pakistan. Okay, thank you for you are listening to me. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Thank you.
Thank you, Venerable, for your uh, reflections on Gandhara and also, uh, you know, for your kind word for the, for the country's, uh, you know, drive to actually regenerate Pakistan's Buddhist heritage. And I'm sure your presence will make all the difference when you go back to your home country. You'll be able to spread the word about Gandhara. Uh, let me also quickly tell you that uh, we have also made, uh, we have also produced maps of Gandhara and they are in uh, languages of the Buddhist countries as well. We have started off with Japanese, Chinese and Korean. And I'm sure we would also like to translate it to your native languages as well. So we, uh, you know, as an as a institution, as a government, as people are trying hard to be as much hospitable as possible. And these seminars are also part of our effort to educate our own Pakistani public as well, that yes, we are all proud Muslims, but we are also inheritor of a grand civilization, uh, which, uh, which, is a, which is like a world civilization. You know, Buddhism is spread almost in every country in the world. And even these European countries have so many of these, uh, you know, Buddhist population, and they have so much of uh, interest there. So Pakistan and tourism can certainly benefit from your presence and we really wholeheartedly welcome you all. Now, our last speaker is a Venerable Yong Sang Yen. Venerable Yeet is the Deputy Director Secretariat of the Body of Sangha Buddhists of Cambodia. I welcome you, Excellency. Please come to the floor. My deep respite to the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha. I am the last to go, and I know that this time is a lunch time. Most of you are very hungry, and I am too. And listening to the previous speakers, all talking about the significance of Gandhara. Everything which is related to Gandhara. And our speakers has already covered up and touched upon most of the Gandhara. My dear friends, before I took a flight to Pakistan, I told my mother that I'm going to Islamabad. Her answer was, are you not afraid? Then I, I was stuck to answer to what she asked me, but I just laughed and I say goodbye to her. Once I arrived at the Bangkok airport and I got to gate C4, which were full of Pakistanis friends. Some of our Pakistan people approached me and asked, why are you going to Pakistan? I'm told, I told him that I'm going to attend a conference. Are you not afraid? Then the second time of the question of being scary to come to this beautiful country keep popping up in my mind, even though last night and this morning. I gave many interviews to the media just two hours ago, and the very common questions imposed or asked, put on me is, are you feel safe to be here? Then my friends, I think there is, there is, there is, there must be something misunderstanding or misconception or misreceive about being in Pakistan. The first question that my mother asked me was very, was not very seriously considered. But when I arrive here, the Pakistan people keep asking that question the same as my mother did ask 
then it's kind of like I think this conference have to have to do something. Have to do something. Why? Because as a Buddhist, we know, we heard, we read the name Gandhara civilization from the very first year of my monastic life, 30, 32 years ago, I knew Gandhara civilization. But Gandhara civilization those days was a fairy tale to me because, because Gandhara civilization seemed to be not well exposed to the outside world. And I think that this symposium should be the starting point or a stepping, uh, a stepping stone that we can let, we can give or we can send a message about Kantara to the outsiders to see, to feel, to reconnect it. There are a lot of misperception about coming to Pakistan. To be honest, my friends, to be honest. So I think that through this venerable monks from different parts of the world, we can bring back a message back to our countries and tell about the friendliness, the warm welcome, and the great significance of Gantara in Pakistan. I have one, one suggestion. I have many, but I just one. I think most of the scholars of Buddhist scholars know Gantara civilization, Taksila, but the common Buddhist do not know. Or it's some kind of like a dream. If you ask a, no, a common general Buddhist, they, they say, maybe I heard, maybe I not, or I don't know. But this is such great civilization why it has to be hidden and not ex well exposed to the outside world. It is a great civilization. So my suggestion for you, my Pakistan friends, I think we have to do something which to build trust in order to, why, to invite all the Buddhist people around the world to come and see and reconnect with this great civilization. But we have to start some, we have to start from a small, how to build trust and let them feel safe. But actually Pakistan is not an insecure country. Pakistan is just like us, but the thing is the outside world feels something different or misconception. We must find a way to dispel this misperception about Pakistan. If we try to have the, in order to have the Buddhist pilgrimage. I think that we can talk so many things, but one thing is clear. In order to invite all those millions of Buddhists across the globe to come to see this uh, Gandhara civilization, first, I think we can start from a very simple, a very simple project. Today we have done it. That is to invite all these Buddhist leaders to come and we go back and we spread the message. And the second one, most of these Buddhist leaders are working in the academic world. So any academic exchange programs can be established because I also work as an acting Buddhist rector and I have hundreds of Buddhist monks study in my universities. So the best way is to start to have the, uh, the best way is to invite all those monks to come and see it. And, and then the word of mouth gonna spread across the countries and it can, it, it can build trust. And the common people will come for sure. My friends, 
comparing to India, comparing to Sri Lanka, to Myanmar, about the about the 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 exposure of the Buddhist heritage, Sri Lanka is still limited. So we Buddhists stand by you and are ready to help you in order to get out and let this Kantara civilization walk across the globe. My conclusion is, my friends, the best way to preserve your cultural heritage is to share with the world. In order to preserve it, is to share with the world. Allow us to be part of this great civilization. And we are very happy, very excited. And I know that if the common Buddhist start to come to see the great, this, this great civilization, then the reconnected, the bridge will be established. Thank you, my friends. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, I, I think uh, Venerable has uh, given a very a good suggestion, and I just want to highlight it for our local audience that that Pakistan needs to, you know, build, motivate Buddhists not only to visit for tourism but also to create linkages with educational counterparts. If the Pakistani educational institutions start hosting, you know, Buddhists who are also scholars, they are not just practicing monks, but they are also highly educated lot. So I think this is one way when Pakistan, you know, Buddhist and Pakistani academics and students, when they come together in an educational setting, I think this uh, link will be strengthened. And I would also uh, like to say that, uh, you know, because of variety of reason, this particular uh, heritage has been, you know, has been stalled. Now we are trying to regenerate it. And I think your presence and our reciprocal visits to your countries with exhibits and a lot of exhibitions. For instance, there is a Buddhist art exhibition in the lobby. You can always invite our artists to actually uh, curate an exhibition, uh, you know, there in your home countries. That will give your local audience a great opportunity to see what Pakistan is about and actually create the, you know, clear this impression uh, of, uh, you know, terrorism that we had. Now, with these words, we close this session and then by Colonel Talat, he wants to make a few quick announcements. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sub. Thank you very much. As a matter of respect, as a matter of respect to our honorable guests, uh, please, sare bethe rehenge, and I will request honorable guests, faith leaders, to move first. Please. Aap thodi bethe rehiye taaki ye apni jagah jab chhod denge to fir aap logon ko main batata hoon kya karna hai. Sir, aap bhi. Sir. Speakers and moderators can accompany the monks and faith leaders. Saeed. Please, up. Uh, Asan, yeah. please, please. Ye photo session baad mein kar le, please. Photo session baad mein. Aap ye, aap move karein.
चलें चलें प्लीज मूव करें सर ये आप मैनेजमेंट प्लीज गेस्ट को गाइड कर दें हसन सईद हाँ जी चलें बाकी जितने मोजज मेहमान हैं उनके लिए लंच का अरेंजमेंट बिल्कुल पीछे भी है और इस हॉल से बाहर भी है तीन तीन जगह पे है लेकिन अभी नहीं है अभी नहीं है मैं बताऊंगा तो होगा मैं बताऊंगा तो होगा चले जी प्लीज हैव लंच
प्लीज बैठ जाए प्लीज बैठ जाइए ये प्लीज ये स्टॉल्स पे खड़े लोग खा, खाली कर दें प्लीज ये स्टॉल्स वाले लोग प्लीज छोड़ दें और ये जिन्होंने पैरल सेशन में कोयटा बोर्ड रूम में जाना है वो प्लीज चले जाए तशरीफ ले जाए वहां मीडिया और ये पीछे जो बैठे हुए आगे आ जाए रात तक ये थोड़ा सा चैलेंज आप आ जाए Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the session three. Session three is titled "Promoting Tourism, Creating an Enabling Environment." I request the moderator of the session, Mr. Kamran Lashari, to please take his seat at the stage. Mr. Lashari is a retired Pakistani civil servant of the Pakistan Administrative Service who served at the top bureaucratic offices. Mr. Lashari is best known for his five-year stint as chairman of the Capital Development Authority. After retirement, Mr. Lashari served as the Director General of the Wall City of Lahore Authority. I request you, sir, to please take your seat at the stage. I now request speakers of the session, Mr. San Lashari, Mr. Imran Shaukat, and Mr. Kesar Rafiq, to please come on the stage. I now hand the floor over to the chair for the session. Acha ji, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So we begin with this uh, session, which is uh, promoting tourism. and i believe it uh, focus its focus is upon uh, the gandhara civilizations tourism so am i audible acha so uh, we have a panel of three eminent people sitting here who in their own way have uh, been great uh, asset to the tourism promotion in pakistan but before i talk about them i must uh, pay my heartfelt uh, compliment to to the organizers of this wonderful symposium so this symposium uh is very heartwarming i am absolutely you know impressed to see the way it has been uh, arranged at the scale and the standard and the um, and uh, the way the people have participated and particularly more than half a dozen countries uh, very eminent monks and scholars coming around this is absolutely a wonderful thing to see in our capital city 
So my congratulations to Suhail Saab, to you, the Director General of the Strategic Studies, Tala Saab, and um, all, all these organizers, uh, and uh, of course, Samad Saab, the archeology span and museum in charge of the KP. So uh, here we have uh, with us um, Dr. Kassar Rafiq at the extreme end. So uh, I will introduce turn by turn and Dr. Kassar Rafiq, I know him personally also. Um, I'm myself, Kamran Lashari, Director General of the Walled City Lahore Authority. And uh, in that capacity, which I hold for the last 10 years now, uh, we have come across each other and worked in a kind of partnership for the last four to five years. Dr. Kessel Saab, I was very amazed to understand that he's the pioneer, he's the one who has uh, you know, launched a television network dedicated to the tourism in Pakistan. This may be the first and the only kind. And the kind of uh, picture quality that you see and the camera work on his, I, I, I almost said it was like uh, the Discovery Channel of the international level or something like that, you know. So, so it, it's really very, very uh, happy thing to say. all those who haven't seen as yet must get hooked on to it. And uh, so he's promoted Pakistan's image nationally and internationally through a great work on uh, Discovery Channel. So, Dr. Sub, uh, let me ask you what really motivated you to get into this uh, very unconventional field in a country like Pakistan to dedicate a channel. I asked you once, why do you have a channel on culture? Why do you have a dedicated channel? So the reply I got from the owner of the channel was, who will watch it? It won't make a commercial proposition. So how do you make it feasible? And how do you think this can have a connectivity and relevance to, to the kind of things that uh, this, this particular um, Gandhara civilization we are wanting to promote? Sir, thank you very much, first of all, and thank you very much to the audience and the organizers. Uh, you asked me a question about the inspiration and what was the motivation. Uh, just a few days ago, I was in one of the university and one of the students has asked me the same thing. And I just told them a brief story about it. I was, I was in Vienna, Austria and representing Dubai government. I was the advisor to the ruler of Dubai. And when I finished my speech there, one of the businessmen, he is leading country's businessman in the petroleum sector. He asked me, he just looked me upon internet, on LinkedIn especially, and he asked me, Dr. Kaiser, you are from Pakistan. I said, yes, I'm very proud Pakistani. He said, I want to ask you a question. I said, sure, please do. His question was that, do you guys have cars in your country? So that was really, that was the, uh, that kicking point when I said, uh, we really need to show uh, the world what we really got. Uh, so that was really one thing yeah. because actually it's so unfortunate that uh, we are enjoying or you can say we are just stuck with bad perception. Yeah. And in today's world, the perception is everything. Reality means nothing. Uh, so that was actually the reason or many upset last time we, when we talked about, uh, about the business model and who would watch, uh, I would like to state my numbers and these numbers are provided by the, uh, PEMRA, uh, documented numbers. Uh, last month we were watched in Pakistan on a daily average base, 47 million people per day. They have watched. This is the documented document. So this is how much the people like to see a beautiful Pakistan, a positive Pakistan. So it's just, again, a wrong perception that people only want to see the negativity or people only want to see the news. So this is also a wrong perception. Uh, and okay. one, yeah, please. Sir, just one more thing. What I would like to say is uh, we watch live uh, uh, our stream throughout the globe. Uh, 
I was surprised to see that my average daily uh, watch list from other countries, only Germans, they watch 100,000 Germans per day on an average base. They watch uh, uh, Discover Pakistan. So that means really... Uh, so what are your yeah, plans uh, with regards to the projection of the Gandhara civilization? Actually, the way I understand Pakistan represent two civilizations and two religions. One is uh, the civilization of uh, Indus, and the other is the uh, Taxila civilization, the Gandhara civilization. And religion-wise, one is a Sikh and one is the Buddhist. This is a ready-made kind of a platform or um, you know basis to pick up tourism for Pakistan. So, what is uh, you think? Uh, holding us from not realizing its full potential. I mean, a symposium like this is a wonderful thing. I'm sure it's going to make a huge impact, but but one odd may not, still not be good enough. So I hope this continues. Uh, that's what Suhail Sahib was also mentioning that we want, but, but we want to take you on this. Uh, what would you like to suggest to the people and the organizers? How, how can uh, this be augmented? Uh, well, if we are talking about, since we are talking about Gandhara, so we are talking about uh, Buddhist uh, religious tourism, which is related to that. There are 39 sites all over Pakistan, which are very prominent sites uh, of uh, Buddhism, uh, the religious sites. Uh, but if, if you go a little bit even over that, you would see uh, as per our research, there are more than 600 Gurdwaras in Pakistan. We might just know five, six. Uh, we have started a program named Satsri Akal Pakistan. So far, we have done 42 Gurdwaras so far. Uh, and they are getting response, like amazing response from all over the world. Similarly, we have started a series on churches of Pakistan with the name of churches of Pakistan, actually. We have more than 200 churches. And some churches are, they are so beautiful, their architecture, their history, their buildings, and the people who are linked with it, their they are really, really ancient buildings. And we received calls from Rome, from various parts of the world. They said, this is like very identical church to our church. Uh, so people are seeing that. Uh, similarly, we have more than 200 Hindu temples. So we have so many assets in our country, the religious assets, if we talk about. Uh, so we just need to <laughs> package... We, we are more interested in prescription than description. So please, uh, <laughs> if you can provide sure. something on that account, that will be good. Absolutely, coming to that. Uh, so what we need to do is, I believe, uh, the first thing is, uh, whenever we talk about tourism, tourism is 33% as per uh, my experience with the tourism. Tourism is 33% is the site, location, or whatever you have. 33% is the story around. We need to build the story of tourism, of Buddhism, of, of uh, Gandhara. We need to build the story. We need to rewrite the story. And the third thing is the packaging. Again, the packaging and marketing. 33% is always goes to packaging and marketing. So if we do it all together, then only we can bring the world to Pakistan, inshallah. Good, thank you. Now, coming to you, Sean. Um... Uh, to your last point, I'd like to add to what your question, which is, I think, the most uh, important question that we have to ask at this uh, synopsis. Um, I think the first and foremost important thing, if you want to promote tourism, is a visa. And uh, that is something that is uh, uh, the start of everything. If, 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 if the visa process is easy and if it is well known, um, uh, the organizing, uh, one of the people, Imran Gondal, who's in the organizing committee of this synopsium, uh, a wonderful thing that he did with the Sikh tourism was that there was a one body that used to give you an uh, uh, invitation letter and all you had to do was attach it to your e-visa application and you got a guaranteed visa. 
So that was something that was very wonderful. Uh, my company, Luxus Tours, specializes in religious uh, tourism or spiritual tourism. And we've done hundreds of uh, uh, yatras for Sikhs. And uh, I think that the, the turning point in, in Luxus Tours being able to do religious tourism was that one window operation where they gave us or our, the tourists that wanted to come uh, an invitation letter, and they used to get the visa just like that. So I think uh, the first thing that we need to focus on is, is making sure everybody gets the visa within a reasonable time frame, and they know how to get it. Off, off. Before I come to you, uh, here we are with you, Imran Shokasab, who is... Uh, advisor and the Sustainable Development Policy Institute and has worked a great deal uh, with the subject of Gandhara. I've also seen a wonderful publication um, by, by the, uh, I think, director of archaeology, Samad Saab, and all of you may have contributed, but, but that's actually one of the most impressive publication, a coffee table book that I have come across. So my, my compliments to you, Samad, and uh, then promoting Gandhara in such an authentic way, impressive way. It's very, very good. And we have seen in the last couple of years some good steps having been taken and a very encouraging response from our friends, from the Buddhist friends and very high-ranking Buddhist friends coming from uh, different parts of the world to Pakistan. How do you look at it and uh, do you find it promising? and uh, persisting and building upon it it's a sustainable thing or you think um, we have to do much more that to get it done if you give me a brief please if you give me the permission may i stand up and, and speak for a little bit by all means talk this way um uh, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen uh, Venerable Monks, Excellencies. Uh, it really has been a wonderful day of sessions and discussions. And let me see how I can contribute uh, a little bit more towards that. And that will actually answer many of the questions that Lashari Saab was posing right now. And in my talk, I'm going to try to cover three topics. One is what I and the partners have practically done to promote the Pakistan and its heritage. Number two, what is the gorilla in the room that prevents Pakistan from reaching its potential? And number three, what do we need to do to move forward? Since time is very short, please uh, indulge me. I'll try to speak fast. Uh, and I may go a little bit over 10 minutes, but it won't be much more than that. So uh, what we have done so far, uh, in 2016, our ambassador in Thailand, and my home is Thailand, Islamabad, or Washington, D.C., the then ambassador in Thailand asked me to engage with him and the embassy to promote Pakistan-Thailand ties. And it just so happened that our current DG of ISSI, Sohel Mahmood, who had been the ambassador prior to that, had set up a Pakistan foreigner at their most prestigious university. So using that as a launching pad, we embarked on a program of activities which actually are highlighted in the newsletter that is going around in the last five years. We have done about 50 activities. There's an activity almost every quarter trying to bring Thais and Pakistan together. That entails cultural exchanges, academic exchanges, facilitating monks to come from Thailand, and many, many other things. In this process, as the people were coming, books have been written on Gandhara by Thai monks. Movies, documentaries have been published, distributed in Thailand and the world, which is The Man of Gandhara. Onwards to Gandhara, another book that has been published. So uh, all these things have taken place. What has happened is that in the last few years, there has been a tenfold increase in tourists coming from Thailand to Pakistan. Because as we talk about perceptions, when a Thai sees a venerable monk like he is, and when they see them sitting in Pakistan, the whole perception of, oh, it's an insecure place, and they go, what insecurity? 
if I'm there, what's the problem? So, and another way to promote Pakistan has been the publication of a coffee table book, Colors of Pakistan Through the Eyes of the Diplomats. And these are pictures submitted by 40 ambassadors of Pakistan that has been turned into coffee table book. And uh, me and my partner, Ellie Takogaki, she's hiding back there. Uh, we have published this book and it has turned into a wonderful piece for diplomats to share with their own countries. Now, what is preventing tourists from coming to Pakistan? It's already been mentioned, bad perception about Pakistan. And we continue to reinforce that. We never negate and present the facts. In five facts, I'll be able to prove to you Pakistan is perfectly fine. Pakistan is perfectly safe. And I also speak that as a former US diplomat. I've lived in five continents, visited 70 countries. Pakistan is actually one of the safest places. And everybody will say, well, how's that possible? Yes, we have problems, but it's a big country. It's the fifth largest country, 250 million people. So yes, does an occasional stabbing, kidnapping, what have you takes place? Yes, it does. Not only are we the fifth largest country, we are going to be the third largest country of the world in 2050. And a population of 400 million. I always present to the world, Pakistan actually is the future. You're talking about a country in 2050, which will be the 15th largest economy of the world at 4.2 trillion. You guys know at that point, when we become 4.2 trillion, we will be at par with Saudi Arabia at that time, UK, France. So we will be at, at in that particular league of nations. Now we talk about safety standards. If you look at the crime statistics that came out in 2023, France was 36th unsafest country. USA was number 55, Australia 76. Pakistan was ranked at 86. 86 out of 146 countries. So in all the big civilized world, Pakistan actually is ranked as the safest country with the least amount of crime. Homicide per capita is higher in Thailand. Russia is 53, USA is 56, Pakistan is 81. Again, in homicide too, we are way down. And finally, we talk about terrorism. Pakistan is experiencing this year, which has been a significantly bad year sometimes, we do about four to five incidents per month of targeted killing. USA, my other home, they're doing 50 a month. Now people will say, well, USA is a big country. No, it's not. USA is, you know, we are 250 million, they are 320 million. So we are more than two thirds the size of the US. So comparatively speaking, Pakistan is a very safe country compared to other countries within our own league. And now the final point, the vision and potential for the future. I think our minister spoke about it. Many uh, audience members have spoken about it. There are 500 million Buddhists in the world. And I presented a vision to the government and some powers that be. I said, look, conferences and all these things are important. They're one small part of it. There is a 10 step process for us to create a vibrant sector. It will take us 10 years. You know, and at that point in 10 years, if out of 500 million people in 10 years, we have enticed 1% of those people to come to Pakistan, which is 5 million people, that turns into a $20 billion sector at the current day prices. It is more than $50 billion. I'm sorry, that point. we will have to rotate the time. Yes. Actually, so what I'm going to actually do is quickly put, streamline the visa regime. Monks and faith-based leaders, they are the ones who are our gateway to the rest of the Buddhist community. As we are doing, we need to bring them. Streamline the NOC regime for the ambassadors. They cannot allow their countrymen to come here if they're not allowed to roam around freely. Aggressive marketing of Pakistan with facts and figures. Organizing tour operators, B2B. Let's get honorable tour operators together with their other friends. Sensitizing the local population. And they need to get economic advantage out of it. Otherwise, we have serious problems. Organizing the sites and the infrastructure, coordinating financing and investment through BOI, donor coordination, cell to be set up, donors have the money to support us. But finally, to do all this and create a huge sector, we need to set something up along the lines of the Wall City Authority so that there is an institution 
that can focus and make it happen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Imran Sab. Uh, professor Ruth Young, she is professor of archaeology, University of Lister, UK, and a PhD archaeological work on Gandhara. So that, that's absolutely a great uh, combo. Uh, shall I shoot you one question, which uh, keep occurring to me? I tried to compare Pakistan with Egypt, and I'm still seeking a right answer. You see, we are both one of the oldest civilizations of the world, and both very Muslim countries, in a way, Orthodox Muslim countries. And yet the Egyptians have owned up their civilization, pre-Islamic, like pharaohs, the mummies, and the temples and gods and goddesses, and owned them up uh, not only in some cupboard or in some museum, but it's all over. The moment you step down at the airport, at each shop, you see. Why is it so that Pakistan hasn't mired up, how would you uh, look at it, at its past history and taken as much owning up, despite that both are Muslim countries? Thank you. I think that's a very interesting question and very, very pertinent, actually. Uh, I think that there is no easy answer to that. I don't think there's a quick and simple answer that I can give you today. I do think it's a lot about how the world stage sees the past. And we all think of Egypt as a very old country with the pyramids and with mummies, just as we think of somewhere like Babylon as a very old civil part of an old civilization with the mythical hanging gardens. And also that's another good example. Iraq, of course, is a modern Islamic country with a past that is perhaps better known than that of Pakistan. And I have to say, having come to Pakistan regularly for the last 30 years or so, and I teach the Indus civilization and I teach Buddhist archaeology in the UK, that it to me is, is a great, it's a great crime, it's a great tragedy that the heritage and history of Pakistan, uniquely Pakistan, is not better known. But to come to sort of possible solutions, and I think an area in tourism and heritage that's really, really important has been touched on just very briefly today. Could you keep your mic closer? Okay. Do you see any requests for that? Yep. Is, uh, okay. Is that of community engagement? Now, those of you who know Dr. Samad, the Director of Archaeology and Museums, has done a lot of work with local communities around archaeology and heritage. And I think just as all of you and so many people we've heard from today are doing their utmost to promote archaeology and heritage outside Pakistan, including with monks from many different parts of South Asia and East Asia, it's also really important to engage with local communities because they are the people who belong to the place of the heritage sites. They are the people who will protect it or not protect it in times of need. And it's incredibly important, I think, to take communities with you on any journey around heritage and tourism, particularly around tourism, because local communities will be invaded by tourists. You know, they will have tourists come. They will have tourists stay, hopefully, in local hotels, use local restaurants. And I think that that is a key part to developing tourism and the knowledge of Gandhara. Thank you. Well, uh, Kesar Sahib, I'm going to ask you, sometimes it seems that the issue with Pakistan is not only perception, which of course is a big issue, but the perception of us about ourselves is, is a bigger issue. In the sense, people want to come, at least some of them, but I'm not sure whether we are wanting them to come. So are we really serious to have people come? They may be Sikhs or they may be um, our Buddhist friends or others, uh, because uh, we have seen a huge uh, input of the government in the, in the shape of Kartarpur, 
but I'm not very sure where it, it has come to in the terms of tourism. So uh, what's, what's uh, the real issue? I, it's, it's, I think on the one side, I may tend to agree with facts and figure Imran have spoken at how safe is Pakistan. Compared to other countries, it's more of a perception issue. And yet the Pakistan regime wouldn't itself make it easy everywhere somebody with a bayonet or a gun stands and guards and salutes and runs up. So we, we, we have blown it uh, too far ourselves. There could be a discreet and a soft way to, uh, to create security. We, we don't have to show it off all the time in a very crude manner. So uh, we, one is we create that image ourselves and then make it so difficult a process for people to reach us and come here. They think there must be something terrible, the uh, security alarms on us. How would you respond? Well, we really wish to, but in some ways we are not prepared for the tourists yet. Uh, we really need to work on that. Uh, infrastructure issues are really there. Uh, we need to. I'm not talking enough. Please don't sidetrack. <laughs> the, the, okay. There's another kind of infrastructure I'm talking about. Okay. So you see, <laughs> um, uh, people go in Africa where there is not a road even. You're right. You're right. Absolutely. You're it, right. You're it's right. not the infrastructure. And uh, so, so. Well, uh, we did talk about perception already that is that do exist. But at the same time, uh, when I see people here, when they come to Pakistan, we don't have an issue here. We are the most hospitable people. If you see the data of couch surfing community, there are more than three to four hundred, which I'm always connected with them. I take their comments and all. Uh, the foreigners are coming through them only through this community, couch surfing community. They are coming to Pakistan. Uh, but once the people come to Pakistan, they have no issue at, here at all. I spoke to uh, various recently, we have done a program with the Japanese ambassador. Uh, what he said was when I was appointed here in Pakistan, I received so many calls from my family members that you're going to Pakistan, try not to go. But once he's here, he called us and he said, I want to, I feel so much safe and I want to do a program with your host. And we have done a program, it's on YouTube and was on our channel as well. Uh, so I don't think really we have an issue once the people come to Pakistan and once they see, once they meet people, there's no issue here. The issue is, bringing people here to Pakistan. That's where the issue lies. Anyways, thank you. So, so I think partly, if not more, we have overhyped the security issue ourselves. We had to be blamed for that than, than the perception outside. So people I know, professors of Al Khan Trust with whom I work and consultants wanting to come to the wall city, they don't find visa for four months. And they were, then they're given visa I talk to Secretary Interior, then my somewhere I get stopped because I can't go every, all the way. And they get a visa for one week or two weeks. So, but, but that's experiences with the officials. But the common people, when they are coming here, they don't have that issue at all. Okay. Uh, they do come, they roam around everywhere. Okay. Good, good. I love that positivity. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, that's, that's so, really Sean, uh, you have been conducting uh, the Sikh tourism, I believe, and uh, you've spoken about the visa, but what other measures you think need to be relaxed or organized or facilitated so that uh, the Gandhara uh, tourism can take off? I think... Uh, uh... More than perception, uh, one important thing is uh, clarity of messaging. For example, if you want to visit all the relics, all the artifacts, and all the religious sites that Buddhists have, you just need to be in Pakistan for five days, and you will not be driving for more than five hours from Islamabad any of those five days. So that is something that that's a luxury. 
uh, I would feel, because if you want to visit uh, sites, um, religious sites, uh, anywhere in the world or any other tourist attractions in the world, sometimes you have to travel really far from the main city to go and see that. And then that becomes kind of a negative utility uh, of seeing that uh, tourist attraction. Whereas here, uh, Taxila is about 46 minutes away. And uh, now that the uh, Savat motorway has been made, which you, it used to take nine hours to go there, now it only takes five. I'll, I'll just share an instant. I was in Skardu uh, about a week ago. Uh, I, actually, I came back yesterday. So about a week ago, I landed in Skardu. And that day, it was uh, extraordinarily busy. Uh, on the airport and the, and then the and the driver couldn't find a parking inside the airport and i was saying you know where are you i'm trying to uh, find you and he said you have to walk outside of the airport and uh, you know i was a bit bit uh, annoyed that why weren't you there to pick me up and he said do you know that today five flights landed uh, at skardu airport at that 7000 feet height and uh, he says that there was a time that one flight would land in a week and now five flights are landing in a day. So, so I feel that these kind of things uh, need to be promoted. When I'm, when I'm working with Sikhs, I send them, I have to send them pictures of the motorway. I have to send them pictures of malls. I have to send them pictures of everything, show them videos because the first timers, people who come to Pakistan for the first time, they're the hardest to convince to come here. And uh, uh, sometimes there have been Sikhs from California who I've been on the phone with for uh, a couple of hours, 1 a.m. in the night, just trying to convince them that please do come. Somebody will pick you up at the airport. We, 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 we drive cars. We do not travel by camels. I mean, all of those <laughs> things, I have to convince them. And once they come, uh, the thing that you said, I make sure they travel through the best roads. Uh, I make sure, for example, if they come by Vaga border, I first take them on the ring road and then bring them to the hotel rather than taking them through the Neher uh, or the canal road. Because like you said, we have to put our best foot forward. We have to be proud of whatever we have. And, and the thing, thing with us is that we're very quick to judge our own country and criticize it and everything. But I think we should look at Pakistan like, our, like we look at our sons or daughters. Uh, they may have flaws and weaknesses and they may be challenged in certain aspects of life but we we cherish their beauty we cherish the, the, their strengths and we're proud of them irrespective and that is the attitude we need to have towards our country that we need to be proud of it in urdu jisko kehte hain jaisa bhi hai ab mera hai so we should be proud of it so good uh, uh, Coming to you, Ruth. Um, what uh, measures do you think uh, some kind of proactive measures should be taken? I think the symposium itself is one of those rare proactive measures. Uh, instead of waiting for people to come and Buddhists to come, how can we connect them and uh, create that synergy, connectivity? and um, something which go, gets into a cycle or a system and um, create that narrative or stories. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, the first university in the world. Now, that, that's a quite a statement. The first grammar, grammar uh, text by Panini from there. The... Chanakya or Kotilia uh, coming up with Arthashtra. Machiavelli has come after, I think, uh, more than a thousand or two thousand years of, uh, of, of uh, Kotilia, who gave us the book on statesmanship. So these are things also to be highlighted. And how would you like to couch it or present it if we have to um, do that? Again, I think that's a very interesting and, and good question. I do think that the people-to-people -people connection is very, very important. I think that's um, one of the most important things that you can have as a country. 
And I think that symposia like this are a very good way of inviting people in, making sure that they do feel safe, that it's easy for them to get their visas, and then that they feel welcome and they see all of these great things about Pakistan. So definitely person to person connection. But I do also think that there is more that Pakistan can probably do to promote itself externally. I think that you already do a lot. And I think that there is so much to be proud of. You're absolutely right there. But to promote Pakistan, to, to let people know about these wonderful narratives, that there is the first university, that there is one of the oldest and the biggest civilizations in the world, that there is religious pluralism and tolerance and a huge respect for different religions and heritage sites of multiple religions. You know, we all know about Gandhar and Buddhism here today, but there's also Sikh sites and the Sikh pilgrimages. There are Hindu sites, there's Christian sites. You know, there are, there are so many fantastic sites that can appeal to so many different parts of the world, different ethnicities, different religions. And I think it's telling these stories, getting them out there in effective ways. And I guess, you know, I'm a bit too old for social media, but I think social media obviously is a great way of doing this and getting to audiences like the, the German market. You, ne you need to find out where Pakistan is being listened to and promote there, but definitely I second making visas easier, not just for religious tourism, but for independent travelers too. And if there's anyone out there with any influence, please look at the online visa system and make, help make that more effective and easier to use. Shabranta, we live in a mohalla a comity of nations or a neighborhood. Now, in every mohalla, every makan or a house has a gun for private uh, or self-defense or protection. I believe everyone has that. And the other one thing is everyone has a praying mat, the masalla. Where do you place them? You put your gun in some almera, lock it, or keep it away. And you keep your praying mat in a side room somewhere, your personal thing. And what do you do? You put paintings, art, culture, greenery, and embellishments to greet your guests. Here is a house who has brought the gun right on the drawing room and in the drawing room and shut away all the artwork. Your take on this, please. Trying to get me shot. Is that what it is? <laughs> Can I have? So <laughs> we don't lack the civilization. We don't lack. But if we are not wanting to project it, and we bring tanks and missiles on the chalk and churahas of this uh, country, then whom do we blame? Yeah, you absolutely. And shut away our theaters and films. We we are a fun-loving people. We have been like that for five thousand years. God's sake. I'm not trying. We have superimposed something on ourselves which was not there 40 years ago. We need to get that space back of 4,500 years minus these 50 years. Do you see the signs of that? Uh, this is a sign of that. When you bring in academics, monks, peace-loving people from around the world, when the country has decided that we need to start owning up to our old heritage of Gandhara and all the other heritages that exist, I think we are just opening the door, sir, to walk away from just uh, the gun, the musalla, and cutting all the culture out. I'm so, saying that is with every country. Every country has my, much more guns and tanks than we have, but, but they keep it away. They are much more aggressors and invaders and warmongers than we are. But they, they, they bring Michael Jackson in the front and, uh, they, 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 and McDonald's in, in the front. So, so, 
and similarly, every country has a religion, we respect every religion, and everybody has a right to religion, so do we have. But you don't showcase that and wear it on your badge as a show. So, so that's what we need to soften a bit and supplement it with culture and such occasions. And our, our let's say, alhamras should, should be flourishing, there should be ghazals, the other day, somebody came to me and said, I want to attend the Sufi music. I've heard so good of your Sufi music. Where can I go? And I didn't know what to tell him because there's no regular Sufi music, even in Lahore. And we, what we have a calendar of events is you open the newspaper, is who's going to which court, whose case is in which court. And uh, so there's a musical chair of uh, accusations and cases and a negativity which generated all by ourselves. Why can't we say which places to go and pa take package tours and uh, attend a concert or, or a ghazal or um, you know Sufi music or something? I, I think that's a perfect ending statement for this day. And all I can say is, hear, hear, Kamran Saab. Uh, just to just to add uh, to your point, I think uh, one thing that we can do is that we do have a tooth relic of uh, 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 Buddha here in Pakistan. And uh, some uh, when I was in Sri Lanka, there's a there's a festival that they hold there. I, I believe uh, for the for the tooth relic, uh, and 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 so many people from all over the world attend. And in those days, the hotel rates are really high. And if if you're not a Buddhist then they, they suggest that you do not visit on those dates because you, you're going to get charged really high. So I believe that uh, we should also have uh, such a festival. And the way to promote that uh, is that uh, something I saw in Thailand, uh, where I was in 2019, that uh, they, they held a very specific kind of expo, uh, the kind that I haven't seen at least anywhere else. What they did was that they placed tables all across the hall and uh, the international tour operators uh, had had those tables and all the local Thai tour operators had 10 to 15 minute slots with the international tour operators. And they used to just exchange notes and discuss packages and exchange uh, uh, contact information. And then th and they would move to the next table and the next tour operator would come to your table. It was like speed dating, but for, for tourism. And I think uh, the next step uh, something that you mentioned uh, that you know this shouldn't be a one-off thing. I think the next step to this synopsium uh, could be, or in my opinion, should be that such a business-to-business -business, uh, uh, tourism speed dating uh, uh, expo should be held here, where where both uh, the private sector in the tourism of of countries like Malaysia, Sri Lanka, uh, Korea could come together with the with the tourism sector of Pakistan. And, and, and they will benefit economically from selling packages to Pakistan. And given the super low exchange rate, uh, I think they'll benefit significantly. And obviously us uh, tour operators here in Pakistan will benefit from showing our uh, uh, heritage and culture to them. So, so I think, I think that, would, that would be the logical next step to this synopsium. Uh, that's something that I feel. Okay, let that be last statement, yes. then we'll open the house. Sure. I would like to just add to it. Uh, I believe it's a people initiative. Uh, all the public, everyone, they need to create the demand uh, for the art, for the culture, uh, for the openness. Uh, they need to do that. And not only uh, they need to do that, but also all these activities. Uh, everyone uh, in the audience, and then we have more than few crore mobiles at the moment. So we need to capture those uh, events. We need to uh, capture our uh, tourism assets and we need to put them onto a digital platform mm -hmm. where the people can see when they search, whenever they go for Pakistan, they can see that. So we need to flood that uh, and we need to say no to uh, that uh, weapons and everything, like Kamran Sab said. So this is people initiative, and we all need to take that uh, initiative right away. Thank you very much. So uh, before we open up for the question answers, um, well, 
these were just uh, hard uh, you know questions to each other but uh, the fact remains that this is as i said very heartwarming to see a wonderful initiative despite all these uh, factors that we are talking about and pakistan is good at self criticism i don't know if that much is allowed and that takes place in uh, countries uh, from where our friends are sitting but uh, that itself is is a great hope in this country that when we self criticize we are looking for answers and we're looking for the right direction so uh, thank you for the organizers of this to put us on that track where we want to be if, for the last two years i see very good signs of uh, buddhist connectivity emerging and developing with the gandhara civilization and uh, hopefully from every year it will add on and very good luck to you so so anybody for any is that the format we are open to the question answers We have about half an hour for question answers, so feel happy and uh, easy to shoot some questions. And if you want to do something in Urdu, then there is no such thing in Urdu. Please feel free. Is there a mic or is there a mic or? Uh, yeah. Or Jin se aap sawal karna chahte hain, please mention Hello. that also. Please. Hello. Can you hear me, sir? Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Kamran Lashari Sahib. I'm very grateful. And my first question is to you. Mujhe aap ke thoda sa jo aap ne Kaisar Sahib ko interrupt kiya tha ya unko thoda sa kaha tha ke infrastructure basic problem nahi hai hamara logon ka aane mein there are two basic problems jo hamare yahan se jo incoming tourist ka flow hai wo kam hai vikas aur phir aapne africa ki misal di thi ki wo to that is a hard country mostly to africa generally the people go for a adventure safari is a hard tourism usme unko infrastructures ki itni zarurat nahi hoti because they are hard uh, हार्ड टूरिज्म होता है उसमें सिमिलरली हमारे यहाँ पे इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर की कमी है बहुत ज्यादा कमी है लेट्स टेक गंधारा के बात कर ले 2005 में सिक्स में आई वाज इन्वॉल्व इन द स्टडी वी डिड इट गंधारा के ऊपर एक फिजिबिलिटी स्टडी की थी एंड आई वाज मेन पार्ट ऑफ इट उसमें हमने ये आइडेंटिफाई किया था इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर में दी एक्सेस टू दीज ऑल प्रेशियस साइट्स वेरी नेरो एक्सेस यू नो and that photographs i still have i found out from my library yesterday when i was coming in to aaj maine samad sahab se pucha tha just just a casual unse baat ho rahi thi so problem to infrastructure ki hai hamare paas it's everywhere it's not it's the basic main samajh gaya if i can wrap it up so your question is regarding the significance of the infrastructure of course it is uh, hotels are very important right. um the transport system is very important the roads are very important and many many other things but what i'm saying is that that's not the fundamental reason for people visiting pakistan as less you may agree with that look at nepal do they have better roads than pakistan look at um, uh, sri lanka even india till till yesterday because their tourism is there for the last 40 50 years and their road network was much i i went 15 years ago was much less than pakistan was terrible in fact even going from uh, delhi to agra very sir, simple road can i little bit can i add it if you allow me okay so the infrastructure doesn't mean only that uh, the electric pole and road and that and the hospitality part is also a part of in, in uh, infrastructures we can say it uh, we don't see it but it, it it is felt it is a part of infrastructure and our hospitality system agar hum overall nation pe jaye i'm sorry log 
बाहर पे बैठे हुए होंगे कि बहुत ज्यादा हम हॉस्पिटेलिटी नहीं है 90 परसेंट जो लोग हैं बिलो पार हैं खाने को पैसे नहीं है क्या हंस के हम दिखाएंगे so there is a lot of hospitality available because uh, i plan tours for it you can uh, all you need to do is stay in peshawar there are numerous hotels in peshawar uh, from where all uh, buddhist sites are easily accessible and all the other sites are very near to islamabad and there are many many hotels good hotels in islamabad like the one we're sitting in so uh, like i said we're very easy to criticize uh, issues but i think uh, for what we are here right now uh like uh, karma nishari saab developed the basant festival uh and all he did was that he just blew it up and it became a national or an international thing and i remember him telling me that he that uh, he did a statistical survey and almost 10 million people came to lahore just for the basant festival uh and uh, so so i think uh, as far as uh, buddhist tourism goes we have the relevant infrastructure here we it's near to the big cities we've got motorways we've got hotels in those big cities from where you can visit those sites so i don't think we that we have that problem as far as the buddhist tourism goes thank you and uh, we are asking everybody except our buddhist friends whom we wish to visit so i i hope uh, one of you will also make a comment how do you look at it how more and more of uh, your kethan kin uh can come to pakistan so 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 what factors are involved to to increase that flow uh, but be, you, you may think about it i'll come back to you but let's let's have a, a question there somebody raising the hand there at the back जी अस्सलाम वालेकुम मोहम्मद जमान फ्रॉम कोचिंग हां सर मैं थोड़ा सा उर्दू भी बोलूंगा जहां तक अंग्रेजी आती थी कोई प्रश्न है वो भी बोल हाउ इट्स पॉसिबल इफ वी आर आर एज अ रिस्पांसिबल नेशन मीन पाकिस्तान इट इज नॉट फर्स्ट पॉसिबल फॉर अस दैट वी इग्नोर गंदारा और Buddhism. It's the reality. It's the right of humanity. So I think uh, uh, we should uh, uh, talk about that. That it is not possible for us that we uh, ignore or ignore these isms or religion. What you are saying to them? Ah, but I am saying two things. Okay. The second thing is that. जो हम सोच रहे हैं हमारा वो रास्ता चेंज करके दे रहे ठीक है सिंपोजियम में स्टार्ट है हमारा हम ले रहे हैं लेकिन जो हमें सिखाया जा रहा है जो हमें फोर्स किया जा रहा है तो ये जो सोचने का बाय फोर्स कि हमने ये सोचना है तो मेरे ये ख्याल है आप जितने भी रिस्पॉन्सिबल लोग हैं स्टेज के हम पश्तून आपके साथ तैयार है इस बात से और हम बिल्कुल एक शायद एक दिन दावा कर लें कि ये चीजें तो है ही हमारे आपकी भी है गंदारा आपके ये नजदीक करीब जो आपके आस पास पाई जाती है हम आपके साथ हैं आप स्टार्ट ले रहे हैं क्योंकि एक रिस्पॉन्सिबल नेशन के तहत हमने ये इनिशिएटिव्स तो लेने होंगे क्योंकि हमने इस दुनिया के साथ तो रहना है तो बस आप लोगों से यही रिक्वेस्ट बहुत शुक्रिया बहुत शुक्रिया जी और So yes please. sir please i am interested in your comment uh, because uh, sir, we are trying to diagnose and the patient is sitting there and we are not talking to him <laughs> so so your comment will be very valuable and uh, we we really sir uh maine yeah, last ek uh, second zara please ye hamare buddhist friend jo bahar se aaye hain uh unhone ek sawal karna hai to uske baad aapko bari dete hain Yes, please bring the mic this side. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ashari. 
and we want as frank uh, yes. comment as we have been frank for that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, talking about the how do we promote the tourism as the moderator has said and asked. I guess that uh, I'm in the same page. Tourism is, of course, it brings money, but at the same time, it's bringing a lot of negativity as well. So when you're talking about tourism, we are always looking at the only one side. In many places, tourism destroy the value of the original uh, sincerity, the original kind of uh, the value of it. So that's why I think I'm in the same pace that uh, tourism doesn't mean that all the facilities, you know, the modern five, five star the, uh, hotel and so and so. It could be, but uh, what we need is that, uh, how do we, as the moderator has said that, uh, how do we make sense for the local themselves first? So the we are just- The preservation. Yeah, I'm preservation and yep. not only preservation, but at the moment, uh, this is a, we, we have those, the, 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 the places there. But do the local people surrounding there, do they treasure those, those sites or not? As you say, that. Of course, for me, the, the site is so good. But if I'm looking around and let's say that all the people around me are looking at me either as a strange person, what you are doing here? So that's a hospitality. That is another sincerity which shows that you do really respect and, and sort of keep that heritage. You value your heritage first. And only then the outside people will see the value of it. So don't just rely on other people, the foreigners to come and value that that is a Buddhist side, that is a good Advaita side. We have to go beyond the idea of religion. Good. So you got the sites, which is, you know, I'm saying that why in my presentation, I said that why you are talking about a Gandhara civilization, but I'm interested more than Gandhara is that uh, what is the energy, what is the knowledge, what is the wisdom you got it so that the Gandhara civilization appear here in this place. So the early, and that is something we have to value. And only then the, the facility, the, all this, you know, the, the hotel, the roads, that is a very, that is a minute. People will, if you want, it is really treasures. If you really want, you know, even the, how much they want to pay, even the, even the visa is how difficult. People will, you know, people are you know, spending a lot of money. I think one of Pakistani when they look at the deep in the sea, isn't it? How much they spend and it's still, they still go and unfortunately they die. <laughs> so it's not about the facility, it's about the, the treasure we got it, and then how we can value that so every other people can value us at the same time. These are words of wisdom. Really, uh, we are very, this perspective, uh, we were not as consciously uh, sensitized and looking at it, but, but so important. Uh, just one thing to your point. I think, I think what you've uh, noticed and what you've uh, observed is so potent and so important uh, because with this uh, uh, six that come in and uh, the ones that we host here, uh, true hosp the real hospitality that they feel when they go to their gurdwaras is that the Sikh communities at the gurdwara is to your giving them is serving them the langar langar is a, is free food that they serve at the gurdwara. So I think to his point, uh, it wouldn't be that much of a stretch how we've given uh, the custodianship of the Gurdwaras to the Sikhs. Uh, maybe we should give the custodianship of the stupas uh, and the religious sites uh, to the Buddhists because they really understand the energy and the vibe of those places and would probably do a better job at, at, at uh, protecting and preserving them. Well, I have a Yes, I, I have a little comment on that. Of course, that is a very, very idealistic idea because this is the country that is Islam. And I don't know how many family as a Buddhist here in this country. So how we are going to start that? Because it is not possible at the moment, then feasible at the moment, in future it could be. But at the moment, why you are not looking, why you are looking under the lens of Buddhist? Because every stone, the Buddha, the whole idea is not a religion. It's a Buddha, it's awakening. 
So as I say that Buddhist Vihara, all those things in the Pali is called Arama or Vihara. Arama means that uh, where you can, you know, we can go to the sanctuary, spiritual sanctuary. If you are getting very frustrated with your family members, if you are getting very frustrated with your business, you are, you are not having your enough customs and what, all those things. So you don't know what to go. At least when in a, term, in, in, in a state of turmoil, you can go there and then that, get that spiritual sanctuary, spiritual power from there beyond religion. So if you are trying to draw the line of religion, this will never happen. Because as I said, Buddhism is, Buddhist is only 500 million. Why your marketing is so small? We have a 7,000 uh, billion, 7 billions of populations. Why are you not targeting for the bigger? If you are just targeting for Buddhist, 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 we are only 500. Out of 500, how many are percentage of them that they can able to come, they can afford to pay? You have a 7 billion of population here who always want the peace, who's always wanted to, uh, tolerance, who is always in the, happy, uh, the, the uh, harmony, who is always in the happiness. And all those things is the something, the story of those things is still there. So why don't as a Pakistani, as a Muslim, as an indigenous, whatever tribe they are, why don't you come out with the, not the border of religion, come out with a universal message and which is already embedded in every rock in your places. Wonderful, very nice. Yes, Ruth, you, you want to say something, then I'll go to that lady there in the yellow, but uh, please. Thank you. I just wanted to come in here because I think it's a, an, a very interesting point that you're both making. And the idea of community being responsible for a site, it doesn't actually have to be a direct ethnic or religious community that's linked to a site. But I definitely think having a community involvement is very important. But what you're talking about also raises some other issues around heritage and archaeological sites, and that's about competing values. And I think if you have a, an archaeological site that is a heritage site, you may have visitors from so many different backgrounds. You may have uh, visitors who are part of religious pilgrimage. You know, we know that many archaeological and heritage sites are living sites for many, many pilgrims of different faiths, um, including Buddhist, Buddhist sites and Sikh sites. But then you also have people coming from different backgrounds. You have domestic tourists, you have international tourists, you have local communities who may value a site very differently to a pilgrimage group. So you have to actually manage that as part of managing a site. And that is actually a really complex thing for anyone who was involved in heritage and archeological site management will tell you. But it's, these points are really important to keep in mind, I think. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, please. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, when I came to the symposium, I to the registration pe, मुझसे पहले कहा गया कि आप अपना CNIC दिखाएं तो मेरा जो जवाब था वो ये था कि I am from the heart of Gandhara civilization Texla तो उसके बाद फिर उन्होंने कहा कि मुस्कुरा दी और उन्होंने कहा कि ठीक है आप जा सकती हैं मेरा नाम सारा महमूद है और मैं Texla को प्रेजेंट कर रही हूं और बेसिकली गंदारा रिसोर्स सेंटर है हमारा जो एक प्लेटफॉर्म है Texla में गंदारा रिसोर्स सेंटर पाकिस्तान के नाम से उसके प्लेटफॉर्म से प्रेजेंट कर रही हूं अपने आप को और अपनी टीम को मेरा लाशारी साहब से भी अभी थोड़ी देर पहले मेरी बात हुई है इस पॉइंट पे और बहुत अरसे से इस चीज को मैं लेके चल रही हूं डिफरेंट लोगों के साथ मैंने इस पे बात की और फाइनली गंदारा रिसोर्स सेंटर के जो प्लेटफॉर्म मिला तो उस पे ये चीजें एक्सप्रेस करने का और इसको प्रैक्टिकली कोई शेप देने का मौका मिला तो बात अभी यहां पे हो रही है कि गंदारा के हवाले से टूरिज्म के हवाले से रिलीजियस टूरिज्म के हवाले से हेरिटेज प्रिजर्वेशन के हवाले से तो मेरा पॉइंट सिर्फ और सिर्फ एक ये है कि जब तक हम इन तमाम इंटरवेंशंस को हम कम्युनिटी बेस्ड इंटरवेंशंस नहीं बनाएंगे तो हम इसकी लॉन्ग टर्म जो है ना तो हम प्लानिंग कर सकते हैं और ना ही हम प्रिजर्वेशन कर सकते हैं अभी तक जो इनपुट्स थे वो लोकल लोगों के जो जितना हो सका या जितने लोकल प्लेटफॉर्म्स थे उनसे एफर्ट्स होती रही लेकिन अभी तक जो रियलाइजेशन आज आ सकी है वो सिर्फ इस हद तक है कि यस गंधारा इज समथिंग टू एक्सप्लोर और इस हद तक रियलाइजेशन आ सकी है कि यस गंधारा इज समथिंग के जिसमें हमें बेतहाशा पोटेंशियल है और उसमें बहुत ज्यादा काम कर सकते हैं और स्पेसिफिकली मैं टेक्सला के हवाले से बात करूंगी 
कि टेक्सला एक गंधारा सिविलाइजेशन का सेंटर तो है ही है लेकिन उसके साथ साथ अगर टेक्सला का नेचुरल लैंडस्केप देखा जाए तो जो सेवेंटीज एटीज में जो उसका लैंडस्केप था वो टोटली एक चेंज हो चुका है और उसके साथ साथ थोड़ा इसको अब आप जी ब्रीफ करें और जो फाइनल मेरा पॉइंट है वो ये है कि जो हमारा स्टोन आर्टिस है स्टोन आर्टिस आर सिटिंग सिंस एजेज अलोंग रोड साइड तो मेरा लाशारी साहब से भी यही रिक्वेस्ट थी और आप सब से भी है कि जब तक हम लोकल कम्युनिटी को हर उसमें इंटरवेंशन में इंगेज नहीं करेंगे तो हम इसको लॉन्ग टर्म लेके हम उसकी प्रिजर्वेशन के लिए चल नहीं सकते टूरिज्म के हवाले से स्टोन आर्टिस के हवाले से विलेज है जहाँ पे हम उसको मॉडल विलेज के तौर पर ले सकते हैं जैसे सैदपुर विलेज जहाँ पे बनाया गया है डिबिया विलेज है वन किलो जो कोई सारी की सारी कम्युनिटी है वहां पे स्टोन आर्ट कम्युनिटी थैंक यू आई थिंक वेरी गुड पॉइंट एंड इट रिलेट्स एंड कनेक्ट्स विद द द रेवरेंड मॉक मॉक हु जस्ट मेंशन दोस एंड सो सो शी इज आल्सो टॉकिंग अबाउट द कम्युनिटी एंड द सराउंडिंग्स दैट दे शुड आल्सो बी पार्ट ऑफ द एंटायर प्रोजेक्ट एंड इट्स नॉट ओनली वन पर्टिकुलर स्टैचूज और स्टूपास बट देयर देयर आर लिविंग पीपल अराउंड इट so they also need to blend with that their art artistry their artisans so make that also part of your project now for instance i give you just an example not that it was conceptualized with by me i may not have done it people wiser and saner than me the project that we have done in the walled city of lahore yes. is what you're saying yes so you see for, the main purpose was to protect the heritage of the walled city of lahore but the approach was different the approach was that first we have to benefit the communities there so that they own up uh, the the shahi hamam and masjid azir khan otherwise it would look that yes people from this part of the city come they look at it and they enjoy it and they go back you will make it just a showcase while there are people living all around it so we started with the project by some people wiser than me doing the infrastructure of that place giving a new infrastructure uh, embellishing their houses giving them new sewerage drainage and open drains but now there is much bigger acceptance of the heritage of that area so that that has to be done uh, i think so ji please thank you sir yes sir maine ये लास्ट ईयर जो कॉन्फ्रेंस हुई दो सजेशन है एक तो इस पूरे को हमें शूट करना है और पूरी इसकी हर साइड को अलग से डॉक्यूमेंट्री बना के इसको पूरी दुनिया के सामने हमें रखना है कॉन्फ्रेंस हुई लास्ट ईयर भी अब भी हुई अच्छी चीजें हैं और दूसरी चीज जो है इसका जो बिजनेस मॉडल है जिस तरह वो सर ने बात की जितने ऐसे ट्रेवल एंड टूर के काम करने वाले लोग हैं जो ऐसा इनिशिएटिव लेना चाहते हैं उस मार्च वाली लास्ट ईयर वाली कॉन्फ्रेंस और ये वाली इन दोनों के दरमियान कहीं उन लोगों को बिठाना या उन लोगों से इंट्रेक्शन इंट्र, करना कि वो इसका बिजनेस मॉडल लेकर आए जब तक वो इसका बिजनेस मॉडल हम उनके सामने नहीं रखेंगे तो ये इंडस्ट्री की तरह उठेगा नहीं हम इस हमने इस पर पेपर भी पढ़े हैं कॉन्फ्रेंसिस भी की हैं लेकिन अगर इसका बिजनेस मॉडल लॉन्च किया जाए आप चूंकि खुद भी आर्कियोलॉजी और कल्चर लवर आदमी हैं तो गवर्नमेंट ऑफिशियल्स को चाहिए कि वो इसका बिजनेस मॉडल लाएं और जो टूरिज्म इंडस्ट्री है एटीन अमेंडमेंट के बाद जिस तरह इसको के के को अलग और इसको प्रोवेंशन लेवल पे कर दिया गया है तो वो ट्रेवल एजेंट्स को इकट्ठा करके उनको इस बात पर लाया जाए तो ये इंडस्ट्री फिर उठेगी बुद्धा टूरिज्म की भी और रिलीजियस टूरिज्म की भी Tell me, God. Uh, I'm sure somebody is taking notes. Uh, you, you wanting to say something? Either the DJ mic and go. So, ye ek master plan us pure area ka banana community ko beech mein shamil karna participate karna aur jaise aap ne bhi. Yeah, ye mic ko front pe le aaye please. Mic ko front pe le aaye the please. Hamare. जो है वो कुछ जो माइक आ रहा है तो आप कीजिए डॉक्यूमेंट्रीज आर बीइंग टेकिंग केयर ऑफ इंशाल्लाह बाय डिस्कवर पाकिस्तान इधर बेटा
I think um, I think our foreign affair need to do something. I think Pakistan have a lot of the um, how to say the uh, ambassador. So please ask the ambassador, try to embassy, try to help promote the culture of our Pakistan, including our uh, Gandhara. Second, ask all our monks and nuns all the world, try to promote. We, we are able to become like peace embassy. Né? How to say that? Maybe we can try to help. Yeah, please invite us become so one of the members to promote this peace and culture. Now, third, I think the mango is a very important issue. You know why? Yeah. All the world know the mango, the Pakistan mango now is a three, three months period. Please promote. Please promote the, all the world. Southeast Asia, Asia, the American, anywhere. Please promote it. I think it's very important. Okay, and then don't forget the media. Yeah, I think the, the ask the media, the so television, and then something like in our website to promote more and more and more. Okay, I think with unity of the, the power of peace, we can do something. But please continue to invite us to come and continue to do something for our Pakistan. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So uh, we still have five to ten minutes. Uh, G, please. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, me Jawad and uh, I have the question from respected moderator. Uh, you mentioned in your you specifically mentioned about the presence of uh, that Quran, Jai Namaz, the praying mat, and the presence of gun. So, don't you think so that the crux, uh, the crux of our gathering here and the meaning of or the symposium uh, was to booster up the uh, you can say tourism and uh, the uh, the mention of the guns and that antiquated. The normistic approach was uh, not needed, and it would uh, kind of uh, imply a negative uh, response on uh, uh, foreigners. So, don't you think so? That should have been avoided. I think that's exactly what I was trying to imply: that to make a positive impact or perception to correct our ways before expecting the foreigners to look at us differently. If you're chalk and churahas, you go to Bahawalpur, this this huge uh, Fawara chalk of the you know 100 years old, the best Fawara in Pakistan. Yeah. You don't have to bring it out in the open such subjects. Road kis naam se hai, chok churahe pe kya likha wa hai. Ye, ye, uh, kya dousre log apne religion ko protect nahi karte, lekin hum to puri dunia ghoomte hain. Hume to kahin koi aisa masla na, na bandhuk ka nazar aya hai, na uh, masalhe ka nazar aya hai. Ye aapke apne hain, inko dil se lagayen, inse itraam karen. Hum bhi utne hi musulman hain. Hum se pehle maare maa baap hum se zyada achche musulman te. Aaj koi nia silsila. So, so anyways, um, we'll wind it up and uh, my uh, okay, the the I last have, question here. Yes, no. Yeah, this is just a comment rather than a question. Uh, partly question also. Well, we are thinking of bringing people to Gandhara as a tourist in a business plan. So, what do we have in Gandhara to attract people? I think this is a question we have to reflect on. Many of us who have joined in this symposium, we are connected with Gandhara in terms of religious affiliation, in terms of our uh, previous knowledge and our wish to be associated with Gandhara. Otherwise, why would be why we would be here? Similarly, when we are talking about tourists, why would tourists come to Gandhara? That that part we have to really seriously think. If it is a celebration widely publicized, as you have mentioned in the case of Tut ceremony in Sri Lanka, in Nepal, we have so many ceremonies which are now publicized and they are attracting tourism. So what kind of celebration Gandhara you are planning to attract people? This is one point I really for our thinking. Economy. 
economy is well, but I know economy is connected with the value. The jewel, it has value. We have valued. Otherwise, it is a so is Gandhara. Gandhara is there. It's a clay, it's a it's a relics, those things. Who cares? Unless and until you put value. How do you put the value to Gandhara is very important. So you have to bring the stories, the celebration, and for that you need people. So who is going to create those stories? Who is going, going to create those celebration? That is very important part. Partly you have pointed out that maybe it is the Buddhist community who should come up for the ownership. But then you all again put up the question, where is this Buddhist community in Pakistan right now? I think there is a big question. Maybe we should bring Buddhist people from all over the world who is willing to celebrate coming to Gandhara to a particular point. And, and even for that, we have to make an event. We have to make story. We have to make story. That is a very important part, I think. Thank you very much. Very good, very good. So we are going to wind up with this session. And my closing remark would be that uh, while we value our- Excuse me. Uh, yes, please. Uh, sorry for the interruption. Uh, this is Mohammed Sohail from Victoria University of Lincoln. We can talk uh, just after the session, one on one. But if you're, unless you have something very pressing to, G. Praise, you have written over there, pathway to the peace. Uh, I just want to say that uh, in order to get a peaceful society, a tolerant society, we must uh, bring the concept of negative and the positive peace. That is what we're missing and that is what we are lacking behind because there is the structural violence inside Pakistan, as you have mentioned before, and the guy sitting over there mentioning the musalla and the gun over there, there is no correlation between those things. Uh, in order to have or in order to promote the tourism, uh, first we need to build a coherent and a multi, uh, multi-religious and tolerant society. Because uh, re recently I have been uh, in F8 uh, Jame Mosque over there, and I said the uh, Friday prayer over there, and the prayer leader after the Juma prayer said that, uh, may God bless the Taliban leaders in the Afghanistan, and may we have the same sort of uh, uh, Islamic uh, government in Pakistan. So if you cannot address those sort of issues inside Islamabad, how can you address a person sitting in Pashin, Turbat, Gwadar or Balochistan that he will welcome or she will welcome a tourist, a Buddhist tourist in their vicinity? Thank you. Good. So we have to reorient, reinvent. In fact, we have to for 5,000 years of age, which is not confined to one religion, or one set of culture, it has been always a multifaceted, rich, diverse civilization and layers of civilization, and we need to own them up. If uh, sometimes we, we are lost in history and we think our history began with 712, somebody thinks it's from 1857, somebody thinks it's um, 1080, but this re the history and the culture are region bound. They're not religion bound. So we need to own up, uh, and I'm very glad that this point has been brought up. We have to own up the Gandhara civilization, not the Buddhist only. In fact, we are today the custodians, not them. We are the guardians. And we have to take care of it and blend everybody, the whole world and the Gandhara and ourselves in this triangular relationship. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, with this, we come to the end of the first day of Gandhara Symposium Conference. I thank you all for your time and patience.
I also extend warm appreciation to all the moderators and speakers for sharing their experience with us. Please join me in a round of applause for all the participants. Thank you for being part of the conference and join us for Tea Served at the Pack.